All right, man. Yeah. So first, I wanted to say thanks for coming on here. I, I, it's been I haven't seen you forever, and it's good to see you. Yeah. Um, but also thanks for um, you know, taking the time out to to come on here and and talk to me about the reason, the main reason. Obviously, you know, we're friends, and you know, we go way back. But also, your career is like a unique career. Like you've like you're not a typical. Um, Air Force guy for sure because you started out as an Army guy. So yeah. that's and that's a there's only there's been a few of the few tech bees that have been that way, um, uh, but uh, yeah, not, there's not many. You know, like Tavis Delaney I think did it, and yeah, um, that's uh, JJ Little I think is another guy that did it. And yeah. there's another guy, in, man. This is oh, in Hawaii right now. Um, who I was a like Delaney was another regiment guy. Um, yeah, he was like a platoon sergeant, but yeah, I, I never met him, just know of him. Yeah, so that's a so it, that's a unique kind of a career. So I, I we're I think it'd be I think people find it interesting to kind of hear your story. So, um, kind of what I've been doing is like guys will just uh, you know, start from the beginning on what got them into the military, and then go from there, like as far as their career progression. Um, and then we can kind of come back and hit on some big stuff. I mean, I know you and I were both in Rhino and um, yeah. did some time in Afghanistan, so um. Uh, I'd love to hear your take on it as well as what happened after, you know, I, after I left ACO and yeah. you, you, I mean, you, I just real quick, when I first got to ACO, I don't know. When, when did you first get to the range? When did you, uh, first- I went through rip, uh, January nine. Uh, yeah. January 97. I was like a rip holdover, um, for like the holiday break in 90, uh, December 96. And then I went through rip, uh, like right after new year's January 97, got to third battalion off company. Like, last week of january okay I got, I got there in um at the like october 97 so you yeah. had just like when i met you you had just you were brand new as well so we were kind of oh. going through the whole thing at, at the same time so yeah. anyway so start us off go like what made you want to be you know what made you want to join oh well and you can even talk about your dad i mean as far as like maybe that having an influence him being a navy seal um you know, just go, just tell us what uh, kind of got you the mode of wanting to join the military and then just go from there. Yeah. Um, so, well, like, thank you, man. Like uh, a lot of accolades, uh, but like everybody you've had on this podcast, like I've listened to every episode. I'm I'm a fanboy. I say that right now. Oh, like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, so I just. I'm, uh, I'm the same way. I'm like, I, I love hearing these stories. I think it's so fascinating. Yeah. No, hundred percent. And I feel like, like everybody you had on is like. Obviously, regiment affiliated because it, it's what we know, and like uh, obviously, but the crew feels huge, and there's such awesome people in there too. But like everybody you've had on, I like I feel like I'm the even though I went through a rip <laughs> and was like in regiment, I feel like I was I'm the least qualified ranger so far. This on your podcast because <laughs> you've you've had absolute legends on your man. So I just want to say that right off the bat. Um, so uh, I joined the army in 1996. Yeah, my yeah, I grew up in Navy, Brad. You know, um. My old man was uh, started out in the UDT teams. Uh, I went through buds and like uh, East Coast when they still had an East Coast uh, buds class. Um, but just quick overview, yeah. But that was Navy. It, so that military bring uh, upbringing transformed me a little bit. Um, I had no plans to join the military going through high school until I screwed up pretty bad in high school, and I was like, I better do something to <laughs> right this ship. And then uh, so I joined the Army. Uh, went went and saw a recruiter. Had no idea like. Uh, I kind of had an idea about Rangers, um, and we can go to that too. But like, ended up joining the Army, was in um, delayed entry program for like a year, some like the summer before my senior year of high school, uh, uh, all through high, my senior year of high school. And then, like, a month after I graduated, I was in basic at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I was in basic there for eight weeks, went to AIT as a uh, 13 for 13 Fox out in um, Fort Observer out in uh, Fort Hill. Oklahoma and Lawton. Uh, I was there for what was another? I forget how long it was. Maybe thirteen weeks. Was yeah. Um, and after that, went to jump school. Um, and then again, finished jump school. Rip Cadre picked us up. Uh, jump school. Ran back to the old Rip Barracks from jump school up the hill. And Wait, so how uh, did that work? Like, how that work for you? I know a lot of guys come in with like the the contract to go to the Rangers. Is that what yeah? You so I, I actually, I yeah, I was lucky. Like I said. I, uh, I know nowadays it's called option 40. Um, it may have been back then. Probably not. Um, I just said, I know, you know, what it was, it was just called a rip contract. That's all it was. You were just okay. guaranteed to go rip. Um, so I had a rip contract. Um, just, I signed up, um, like I said, talk to armory recruiter. He had no idea what the regiment was. Um, like he, odd? 
Yeah. You wouldn't know. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I go and say, you know, I'd, I'd like to join um, the Rangers. I don't know what job I'm available for. Uh, he said, cool. Well, there's all these slots open for the 13 Fox. I was like, cool. What's that? He goes, oh, it's a Ford Observer. And he showed me a video of like, like put the VHS tape in because it was 1995, 96. Right. <laughs> and we were watching like guys run out of tracks and like run into an open field. And I was like, okay, that was cool. He goes, yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, if you got a Ranger contract too, you'd be even more forward. And I was like, cool, I'll do that. Um, and, that and that's all I knew. And then like later on, um, like my actual knowledge of regiment prior to joining was like, uh, I don't know if you remember, you were in the military then. Like there was in Florida phase, like I think it was in 95, they had like those three or four deaths uh, in uh, in Florida phase. Oh, in yeah, class. yeah. Yep. And so for some reason, I was just reading the paper um, that they had a big story on it. Um, and that just would plant the little seed in the back of my mind, even though that was like Ranger school specific. I didn't know the difference between right, right, Ranger yeah. school and regiment. So that planted the seed and, you know, the, the Lord of the Rangers started, uh, you know, growing from there. But yeah, man, so I had a RIP contract, graduated um, airborne. They ran us up to the RIP barracks. Uh, we were in a holdover for the holidays. So they, we were just on detail. Uh, mm -hmm. They were getting PT'd or painting walls for like three weeks. There's more PT. Wait, so they took you right for. They're like, here's your here's your jump wings. All right, yep. warm up. Let's run yep. over here to. Yeah. Uh, they, well, we had enough time to out process. Yeah. yeah, had enough time to out process. Grab our mineral folders uh, with everything, and then two duffel bags. <laughs> and they wouldn't let us home on the truck, so we had to carry a duffel bag. You know, carry. Yeah, run with them up to uh, <laughs> up sightseeing road. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Geez. So that was fun. Uh, yeah, man. Then we were holed over for, like I said, um, through Christmas break. They let us go and leave um, and then came back and went right into RIP. Graduated RIP. Got assigned to Alpha Company, uh, Third Ranger Battalion. Uh, we're, uh, you know, more uh, at the time. Shoot, man. He was an E5. So Sergeant Morris was a. Oh, yeah. uh, he was actually my first FO. You know, I, you, you know, when you get there, you're an FO RTO. Um, Sergeant Finney was the uh FSNCO, uh, Mitch was another platoon FO. Um, yeah, and then you know, 375 for since January 97 to the end of 03, and then went from there to a uh, joint gig down at uh, Eglin Air Force Base while still in the army. That was oh, pretty right. cool, yeah. yeah. And then there, um, who were, yeah, who were you down there with a couple of tech, some tech bees, like oh, well, so active duty tech bees, um, that I met down there, um, and I worked with Holbrook. Chuck. Oh yeah, Chuck. Holden, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I went T2I with him a lot down there. I got to know him really well. Um, it, yeah, when I left there and started joining the Air Force, uh, met him off and on, but uh, you know, like off and on between training and stuff like that. But when I heard about the accident, man, I was just devastated. Yeah, such, that was horrible. Such a good dude. Yeah. Um, so he was active duty tech there. Um, James Rigney, Jim Rigney. He was a uh, active duty tech there. He was a uh, he was a uh, mainly conventional side guy. Um, but like the retired contract or retired tech B that were working contracts is there was like Dennis Wise, yeah. um, Mike Gallagher, um, Bob Taylor. Um, he was, uh, he had that incident on Fort Sill where they, uh, oh, where really? the impact was on the OP. He was, oh, part okay. of it. yeah. So he had a lot of good stories. He's just a good dude. Ron Spock. Uh, oh yeah. Spock. Yeah. Chief, Chief Tim Finn. Chief um, Finn. Right. Right. Yep. And that's uh, like, that those, yeah, was, that was, was like, there was an older crew, but they, yeah. those are like, they're they were like the awesome. godfathers of the career field. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. I was so, so fortunate to run into them and work with them. Really, I say work with them, learn from them because it was, right. it was, yeah. At, a wealth of knowledge, you know. Just yeah. Everything. Cause like knowing that uh, generation of TACB and like I mentioned, like I, all I knew of TACBs was you guys at the 17th uh, and going in there. So I was like, can't be that big a career fill uh, outside of Dennis. Um, Dennis knew you, I think, in, from Korea. Oh yeah, Dennis and I were in Korea together. Yeah. <laughs> he, Dennis, uh, he was a much older, like he he was yeah, like yeah, yeah. very. He's a mentor, right? One of the uh, there's a, a handful of guys that were like instrumental in my yeah. upbringing, and he That's was awesome. one of them. Man, just a great dude. Awesome. He guy. is just the humble, humble man. Um, yeah. And then one of the like the, the real OGs, uh, Morris Larkins, Mo Larkins. Um, okay. He was like a Vietnam era guy. Um, work there too. So like I said, just a whole other generation attack B that was like just absolutely privileged to be um uh, around sure. um at JFIT. And then yeah, so I was there. I worked there as active duty army 
And then I actually got I guess, separated from the army while I was there. And for like six months, I was working construction down in Destin. Okay. Uh, and then I uh, got hired on to JFIT as a contractor. Oh, okay. And was doing that for a few years. Um, my family and I moved uh, from England. My wife, um, ex-wife, first wife. Uh, gotcha. At the time, she was uh, over at Herbie. And then we moved to Bragg uh, together. She got a job at Bragg. Um, then, you know, things happened. We got divorced. Uh, and then I decided to try and go back in. Um, I actually tried to go back in the army first, but when I talked to a recruiter, he was like, uh, dude, you have to come back like month to month just to see what's open. Um, really? So I was like, oh, I'm not going to chance that. Honestly, just what am I going to do month to month? So I started talking to our, right. our Air Force recruiter and he was. So he, wait, so real quick, you, so you yeah. retired or you got out of the army as an E7. Yeah, yeah so I got out of the army as an E7. Yeah, 10 and a okay. half. Uh, yeah, did about 10 and a half years total um, in the army between regiment and that uh, joint gig. And then, uh, yeah, and then. Yeah, got divorced, had that separation service. Uh, the process took a while, but finally ended up joining the Air Force. Um, January 2011, um, went to, they just started that Tech B Prep Schoolhouse in yep. Lackland. And then I did that, went over to Herbie for the schoolhouse. And then from there, went to uh, back to Fort Bragg uh, to the 14th. So I got there in nice. late May, early June 2011. Was there until about uh, June of 2017, um, and then went to Korea, the 604th for a year. Okay. Then after that, went to Fort Riley, uh, the 10th Ace Austin, retired out of there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's such a, like I said in the beginning, it's such an, uh, a diverse career. You know, you just like yeah. you were, you know, you started soft in the Army, and then you were you had the opportunity to work conventional in the in the mm -hmm. Air Force. But then you went to the 14, so it's kind of like those are they're airborne. You know, they're not exactly soft, but they're kind of high. They're a little yeah. more higher speed, a little more higher tempo. Um, and then Korea is always. Fun. I mean, were you married when you went to Korea, or were you single? Yeah, guy? that was yeah. I, I remarried in 2016. Um, okay. So well, yeah, and my yeah uh, wife, we just had our son just turned. He was about you know no, he was about six months when I went to Korea. So like, okay. So let's go back to. Um, Let's go back to regiment. Let's talk about when you're yeah. still in the army. Yeah. Um, at, like I said, that's when you and I first met. We were yeah. essentially, I was like a, I think I was an E4 at the time, but essentially we were both newbies in the regiment. Yeah. I, we had, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, and um, and like you mentioned some great dudes, like, you know, Mo was there, Steve Morris, uh, uh, Mitch Emery, you know, yeah. just awesome guys and who went on to do like great things at like higher, the highest oh, levels yeah. of the army, oh, yeah. you know, like national level assets. Um, uh, which is that's very fortunate we had the opportunity to work with those guys. But then you yourself, you know, you you also did those things. I mean, you were also you you started off. I, I remember we used to because I was like younger. So you and I and Mitch and everybody, we all we were all kind of younger guys. So we'd all commiserate about, you know, this and that. Yeah. And then it, I was really happy to hear that you um, like kind of surpassed that uh, spec for mafia and went <laughs> to the higher levels, you know, started being yeah. like. A regiment guy, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. A, yeah. yeah so uh, I was really happy to hear that because um, I knew, because I mean, and that's what I loved about ACO too. I don't know how the other companies were probably the same because we all had good JTACs there as well. But every time we would go out to the field, uh, it was like you, I wouldn't even have to do anything because it, it was you guys were so good at even doing all, you know, it, the way fire support, and it's kind of like the way it is now with JTACs in, in regiment. But back then, the, you guys didn't have the JTAC status. So I was like the only yeah, JTAC, but you guys, but I would trust anybody in, in that team to do the JTAC mission because just the, how awesome you were. And Mo was like adamant about teaching us everything. And I don't think Finney was there when I got there. I think Finney had moved to. Um, yeah, he moved up to, I think he was up at Baton, yeah. 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 Him yeah. and uh, who was that guy? Who uh, was uh, Wood, it's our first class of Wood, John Yves. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. John Yves Wood, I think is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget, but yeah. He was a little intimidating at first. Yeah, he was, <laughs> yeah, he was a Grenada guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But not a blast, man. You guys were all like so scored away as far as like you know fire support and everything. So it was really easy being you know we all kind of worked together. We kind of like y'all kind of meshed. Um, but yeah. Um, so let's talk about let's just fast forward to um, like 2001 when we yeah. ended up going over. Tell talk me through when we first you know were tasked to go to Afghanistan and yeah. then kind of your experience, how you saw it and that kind of thing. Maybe I can chime in because we were right there together. We were shoulder yeah. to shoulder the whole, whole time. So yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, 
yeah, I mean, everybody's got a story about how it happened and how they found out. Um, I, it, it's really no different. Um, we, so I know for the planning phase, we initially went right back up. To, we went right up to four brag um, to start playing, went to the ATF, um, did some planning and then came back down to third battalion um, and then did some more planning specifically for the jump. Um, I remember sitting in uh, uh, the briefing room over in battalion headquarters, and we were talking. We were looking at Rhino imagery and everything like that. And I remember uh, some first guys Gargana talking about the you know the make of the building. You know, is it concrete? What type of uh, materials they use to build that? I was like, oh yeah, I'm so in awe of his just the way he thinks. You know? Oh yeah. Uh, and I still, I just remember that I just remember that because I was like, man, this dude is he's yeah. It's like that makes sense. Why would he ask that? Because that makes sense. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, so yeah, we did more planning, um, and then uh, yeah. Uh, Wait, so real quick, so just to, mm -hmm. to cage this, Sergeant G was the platoon sergeant, or was he the yes. a, was he? he no, was he was a, a third, he was third platoon platoon sergeant, the one that we did jump with. Yep, yep. And you were the um, you were the uh, FSNCO. Not, FSNCO. Yeah, I just became the Alpha Company FSNCO. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't no, want to gauge it. Kind of like they were like, "Well, was he going to do the planning?" Like you were the man at the time. Like you were. The yes. Guy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Unfortunately, our FSO uh, got in trouble like prior to, so we didn't have yeah. an FSO. Um, still, still a good dude. I'm still in touch with him. Like for sure, hundred yeah. percent. And yeah. I think I don't even know what I don't. I don't even know all the details of that circumstance, but it, I was like, ah, that sucks because he was a really good guy and yeah he is he really a was. Guy. yeah yeah absolutely. Was really so he's great family man now um yeah he's doing he's doing great things um but yeah so unfortunately he wasn't in regiment anymore um so you know we deployed the uh off you know we went didn't go right into um afghanistan we stayed in the island for well, we were there for what felt like two three weeks maybe before it was a we, while yeah yeah because yeah. i remember it became a routine just like pt chow <laughs> right uh sit in updates you know chow pt like, and then like are we gonna do anything what's going yeah, on yeah yeah uh and, yeah i remember uh the hangar that where all gear was stored at um you know the uh the other unit was there they were always running rehearsals they had their their unit specific stuff there that was pretty cool um and then us yeah we we're just waiting like I remember the build up to the jump in Iraq a little bit more. Maybe it's just because, like in, in Afghanistan, I was just like everything was just coming to me. Like I was right. And, yeah. and once it happened, I just like deleted everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, up leading up to the jump, man. Um, luckily, unlike Iraq, I just jumped in a soul pack into Afghanistan, so it, yeah. it wasn't that heavy. It was, you know, honestly, it felt like an MLAT. That's it, what I always tell people. It, it was like hundred percent MLAT. It was like the exact, it was like we yeah. were just jumping into like, I don't know, Anis, Anderson, Anderson, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Something, yeah. 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 And then, I mean, think of, you want to talk about the resistance we met. It was kind of like that anyway, you know, because I mean, we hardly, it was like we just assembled and then we kind of yep. did some, you know, I remember we, was that, I don't know which direction we were going, but there were like some suspected bunkers or something or some mm -hmm. ditches or something that we investigated and it was like nothing there. And then, uh, there were some trucks that were like coming into the area and then, you know, the gunship, like I tell everybody, like there's maybe 20 or so people on the, on the objective. The gunship took out most of those guys. And then yeah. who's the guy, who was the Seco um, platoon leader or, or who was the guy? Uh, that... I remember Gilliland. He used to be an ACO. He was a mortarman um, yeah. switch over to be 11 Bravo. And then he went to Seco as a squad leader and he was in the, he was part of the, um, it was Seco Hole that jumped, and then uh, Alpha Company Third Platoon Plus. <laughs> right, right. Uh, for the uh, so we, you know, Third Platoon had our end of the airfield to secure. I, I always wonder, like, because you know what else went on at that time? There was something else going on in the yes, country. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, were we a diversion or were we like, was it like, um, was it a show of force? Of course it was. Yep. But then also, was it like to get eyes somewhere else? I don't yeah, know. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, and you know, what was else is going on could have. The equipment and fuel they needed um yeah, yeah yeah it was kind of a jumping point um i mean the jump itself is fine um like i remember rigging up and, and you know they just meant you know don't your waistband just wrap it up and tape it don't even worry about routing that reserve, yeah, yeah. Uh, through the reserve uh that the jump was fine it was uh 
was it, I don't know if it was that or the Iraq jump that I just I thought I had time more time than I did. I re, I forgot I realized Probably both. Was, yeah, I forgot what you know we weren't jumping at twelve hundred feet and it was eight hundred or below. So yeah, there's yeah. zero time to react. And I was like, oh yeah, there's people below me. I got time. I don't know. There were just huge bushes that looked like a round parachute <laughs> under me. So then I immediately hit and then rolled. Yeah. And then we assembled. Everything was fine. Um, uh, the, the gunship that engaged that, tar- that was uh, trucks. Uh, I think I talked to Captain Ron- No, it's not Captain Seifert was the company commander. Yeah. Um, and Martin was our first sergeant. So I remember just giving him the update because we were talking to him. And then he, he got clearance. And then we just, I, you know, I give... I, I didn't give clearance. I just told the gunship. Yeah, at that point, the gunship kind of engaged. Like, yeah, he's just okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was that was a big highlight for me. Then and then the biggest pucker factor, I'm because I remember I think you and uh, Brandy and uh, I think it was uh, Matt like when you were, when they were asking you about it. The biggest pucker factor for me was ramp going up, us leaving. Yeah. Why are you getting the call that oh, yeah. it was AAA or ADA in the area? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I'm like, after all this, after such an yeah. easy mission, and then we're going to get smoked and it's like, taken like, off, you know? like Took my K-pot off and sit on it. Well, that saved me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, for like 30 minutes, I uh, I was I was super worried. Oh, sweating uh, bullets. I'm like, is yeah. it? Or is, is it? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Was, from jump to assemble to – uh, breakdown to load in the aircraft. Um, felt like a very long MLAT, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Really did. Like an easy, kind of almost an easy. I even downgraded it because it was, you know, it was a, uh, you know, basically it was an important moment in the, in the war, you know, but it was an MLAT. I'm not going to like oversell it to yeah. where I was, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, strategically, it probably had some significance, mm. but then, you know, uh, other than that, it was like, mm. No <laughs> Until we took off, and then we all thought we were dead. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, don't I don't think anybody else. I don't think anybody else. Honestly, uh, the crew chief didn't care because he was like super nonchalant. Yeah, he didn't even. Yeah, nobody else in the aircraft seemed. I was like, I don't. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's because we were the only two with comms there. Other aircraft. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, do you remember getting back to base, getting back to where we were, and then going mm-hmm. to the defect and seeing the CNN footage on the yes. TV? Do you remember that? <laughs> We're like, what is that? Is that why we did it? Because of that? Yeah. Just so they could have that footage? So you used me. <laughs> oh, that looks familiar. Oh, uh, anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So, anyway, we did that. That was fun. Yeah. Um, so, I there's, ended up. Oh, go there ahead. was more cool missions during that, though. Nothing nothing kinetic, really. But remember, we did that like rap patrol in the desert during Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was like, for about a week. <laughs> so, we would, uh, uh, I think we were out with Second Platoon. It was uh, Bordeaux's Platoon and uh, Heg. And, uh, we went out with them just doing, yeah, just doing rap patrols, securing desert landing strips so other assets can come in and do their thing, yeah, and then yeah. collapse back, and then we drive to a hide site, and then the next night we'd repeat it. But do you remember the night we had the P3 on, and there was an LNO uh, on station or on board, one of the regiment LNOs, uh, Intel guy, and I, I think at that point it was just becoming like Groundhog Day because we were, you know, just drive hide site. Wait for dark, drive, secure, desert landing strip, repeat, repeat. Yeah, yeah. When we're tasking the P3 just on sensor taskings. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know if you or me. I'll take the hit if I have to. <laughs> you can blame me. I don't care. <laughs> no, but I don't, I don't yeah, remember what you're And then the LNO came back. Oh, it was the LNO's fault. It wasn't our fault. Uh, oh, okay. It was uh, Russo. Remember the guy with the super thick Boston accent? Oh. Um, he came back. He goes, Man, I've been combing this desert. He he did the he did the space balls line. I've been combing this desert for hours and I ain't found. And then <laughs> over the radio. Over the radio. Not two <laughs> seconds later, Mo pops up with his. <laughs> you guys are being monitored by every. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the last of that fooling around. <laughs> but it's it's true though. Like you get into that mode, you just like day after yeah. day, it's kind of the same thing. You just get kind of laxed, you know, and then uh, stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah. So that was, I, I, know, was funny. I don't think it, he wasn't the first guy to do that in that war, I'm sure. I mean, no, absolutely. I hear not. stories all the time about the sim- similar things. So, yeah. No. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So the rest of that appointment, I mean, we did that. And then we uh, four deployed somewhere else. Um, I don't know if it was J Bad or not. I'm trying to remember when or where. Um, during Christmas, um, 
And then we're just, uh, I know like the platoon was living out of bunkers and the company CP was like living at that hangar. Yeah. Um, and we we're just waiting, honestly, to go into Bath, I believe. Yeah. And around that time, like, like second platoon was on call to go to like into the mountains of Torbor because they were, they were being like, they were asking for a platoon of Rangers, but for some reason at that time, they just didn't go. Yeah. Um, and then we actually eventually ended just, I think we ended up on Bath. Um, for a little bit, but then didn't, and then yeah, we ended up leaving shortly after that, didn't yeah, we? I mean, yeah, yeah, right after the new year, honestly. Yeah, um, yeah, and that was, and then first back came over and they just got after it, man. They were yeah. just doing all that tour bore stuff. Yeah, so we get back in January, and then that March we're in JRTC. Um, right. we hear about one seven five, uh, you know, the battle they did, but uh, we had one. I don't know if it was a platoon or one company from 175 with us at JRDC. And all I could think of was like, man, these dudes must be pissed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, be man. Here with us. Um, how did they, how, why? Why? I mean, did they just get left behind or? Uh, they pro- uh, like, only thing I can think of is like, maybe they didn't realize they didn't need, like for us, like, well, third battalion was over there. They didn't need the whole battalion. I don't know why the whole battalion went. Oh. Let's keep a company in reserve. And while they're in reserve, let's send them to, for poke <laughs> i don't know <laughs> what a kick in the ball yeah. like not only did you not deploy and get after it with your with your battalion but you had to yeah. go to jrtc yeah jeez yeah so yeah and uh, yeah and then like when we got back though you moved on uh yeah. and so that's where our path split for a little bit yeah yeah yep. yep. so we'll go from there like tell yeah, yeah. I so mean, i i kind of lost track of you guys after that so yeah. what uh what'd you guys um, do after that we like so between September of 2001 and April of 2003, it was trainer deploy, trainer deploy. Um, and I did a, like a, a professional development course, I had to go in between, like it was extremely busy, man. Like, I had no idea, it was like it was just going from, from 97 to 01, just a constant RF cycle where you know, train up your R and R for F1, so you're not really doing a lot of outside um fort benning training so you're, you're just uh sitting in fort benning doing local ranges if you're right. like enough to get a gunship kind of coolidge that's cool um then you go to a less restrictive cycle and that's just repeated for like years and years and years and all of a sudden uh the war kicks off and then the, i don't i was honest i definitely was uh gone more than i was uh home I, which was fine i wasn't married at the time i didn't have a girlfriend um, I was stupid enough to get a dog. I don't know why I got a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I gave it to a, I gave it to another uh, buddy with the family. Uh, so that worked out for the dog. Nice. Um, so yeah, I was just gone all the time. Um, so yeah, between September 2001, April of 2003, um, my last deployment with the regiment, it was like just deployed, gone. Cause so get back January 2002, JRTC in March, you know, we had, you know, we had leave and then, Train up for JTC, JTC, prep for the next deployment. Um, I had to go to BNOC uh, at the time, which uh, it's called something else now, like or leadership course phase two or something yeah, like yeah. that. I don't know, but it's like for the army, it's for like an E6 on um, professional development. So I had to go to BNOC like in uh, May, June out in Fort Sill. So the company already deployed without me. Not, not say without me, but the company deployed. A couple yeah. of us, I think Josh Thomas, he uh, stayed back too because uh, his wife was pregnant. And she okay. gave birth around that time. So there's a few of us like on rear D caught um, flights uh, a few weeks after the company and then met up with them in Asadabad. So I got to Asadabad June of 2002. We were there through uh, September, October. Um, that was a fun deployment. Um, yeah, yeah. That's where uh, who's with us most of the time. Um, Q was in and out of there. A lot of guys. Uh, Hank House was there. Okay. Yep um was billy there i think billy otter was eric i know billy did the jump with me with us okay. in her in uh in iraq um but okay. we had at that time i think that might have started the process where we had a jzac with every platoon like yeah. every every time a platoon went out the wire um there was a jtac in that patrol nice yeah so you guys were just ran ragged Definitely. Didn't Billy Otter go with us a couple times like when we did those rat that rat patrol thing i thought that he was out or he he either he was with us, or he we met like a, a, a 130 would land out in the middle of the desert, and Billy would get off, and then we'd do something. Or 
I can't he was there. He was around sometime. I, I just can't remember when it was. But anyway. But yeah. So, yeah. yeah so I mean, that, uh, that's when I met Mark, first met Mark Foster. He was in Sahabad. OK. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm not gonna rag up now uh so that was that was that was good for me um we were in a sod the entire time up until yeah. we had to drive back to bath and then just redeploy from there it was awesome it was just our company out there um i guess keep actually, busy I, met, I, met, I met uh mass uh at the time master lundquist out there because we oh, had okay. we had uh special mission units roll in and out you know from there right, right. we had a oda stay with us for a little bit in okay. Asadaba, that's where I met Lunk. He was supporting an ODA uh, team right, there. Yep. Um, had an RD team uh, come rolling it out at that time. I think they were there for the majority of the time we were there. They were there with us too. Nice. Um, so that was a fun deployment. Um, that was way more kinetic than the last one for sure. Really? Especially for, especially for you know, uh, Billy and Q and everybody um, yes. and patrols. They were, yeah. It was fun. Like, do you have any specific things that uh, come to mind at the, at um, the uh, run together? A lot of times, yeah. will, um, you, it, when you get after it so much in a certain location, it all kind of runs together. So it just seems like, yeah, we were we were running and gunning the whole time, but having specific instances or is kind of hard to come up with. But you know, no, there was you two. Any? Yeah, there, uh, just two that um, stick out. One because I we've I don't I, I can say I and I think all of us on that patrol at that time we were coming back. And none of us have seen, for some reason, the road exploded in front of us. We're like, the hell just happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> apparently, you know, it, you know, it was our first instance with, with you know, IEDs. Uh, that was right, in right. You know, the summer of 2002. Like, we never prepared. I, uh, the only intel we got was, because we were running, like, just gutted um, Humvees. We, like, ditched the RSOVs. Right. They weren't applicable at that time. Uh, Humvees. Yeah, the RSOVs yeah. wouldn't work out there. because Yeah, no, it's ours. Yeah, they're Rain was too bad. Uh, Rolling tires, everything. Um, so we're, we're just running gutted, up arm, uh, plated, anyways. I want to say up armored Humvees, like the the um, they had you know diamond planning in the back, but we windshields are gone. Like bird cage. I mean, you're yes. just like windshields no are gone, doors were gone. Um, yeah. no rear. You know, there was it was just an open truck all the yeah. way around. Um, and so and I remember, you know. Uh, any like intel threats we updates we get it was be, and i assume it's because we were rolling around in those open vehicles it was like as you as you know they were said be prepared you know as you roll through uh like a sodabot proper when we got actually got into town obviously we had to slow down so we didn't run over everybody um right. as we we're going through the market like just eyes up because you know we got um uh you know hits of maybe they'll try and reach in either grab a weapon or you yourself and drag you out so we're eyes up on that. And, but I never recall ever like having Intel about IEDs just, it wasn't right. a thing then. Yep. So we're coming back. Yeah, from like all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, like the road just exploded. Like, we don't have that. So, uh, that, and then it was, so we're there. Um, it disabled one vehicle, zero injuries. Thank God. I don't know how that happened. Um, yeah. Uh, but you know, found the command wire and just, there was a town as we're, you know, you're limited to where you can drive out there. Sure. Um, cause I think Sadabad became like fob right or something like that eventually, but it's thought back in the day. It was so very few, um, avenues approach you can go. Right. So, you know, you found, you know, they, um, found the command wire that, uh, deaded it and ran it to a town down the valley. Um, uh, and then I think Sergeant Major Birch was with us for that, um, that incident so he knew what to do obviously yeah <laughs> yeah um they get back to base and then the other one that i recollect was uh you know i, I was still the company of fsnco at that time so i had you know there were platoon jtacs there were platoon fo's there were platoon fo rtos so like as a platoon or as a company fsnco i didn't really like i we had an fso at that time thank god uh russ ripiso um, yep. So he would be with the command element wherever Captain Ryan would go. He'd tag along. I usually was with XO um, with the uh, other CP, um, and XO didn't really go out that much. So I would, whenever my guys needed a break um, from going, uh, I was like, "Hey man, let me. You, you need a break? Let me go." <laughs> like you don't want to take <laughs> yeah. the spot. Yeah. So luckily, I went out. Um, I went out with third platoon uh, with. Uh, G and Bostic, um, 
and again, where we're coming back, just it was patrol. We we're going out to an area. Just really, it was honestly at those at that time, man. It was like uh, patrol. Like we were just patrolling, hoping for a contact, and then we engaged. There were um, like H HVTs that we would go after, or at least go down the areas that we knew. Hopefully, we can kick something off. If not, we at least gather some kind of intel and sure. come back. Um, and the way back of that one, uh, we just um, were engaged from across the river. Um, and so for some reason, did we have, yeah, it was just me. I didn't, so we didn't have, a FO, we didn't have an art, uh, the FO out there, Thomas, um, or there wasn't a, uh, JTAC at the time either. So it was just me on the patrol. So I was like, sweet. Um, we just took a little bit of gunfire, um, from across the river. Um, so I, you know, dismounted, started running up, trying to get my antenna up and everything like that. Cause, uh, we were getting classes and, you know, just get up on, uh, I didn't know it was jarring then, but, you know, just get up on this freak, call right, this right. person, see what they can give you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I did that, but uh, like by the time, uh, something came over, like it was just sporadic shot. Um, they stopped this, I think that's all they wanted to do. And then, yeah. you know, the 50 cal and the Mark 19 engage. And I think that just made it move on. So I didn't get to do anything then, but just the, the pops and the whizzes and the cracks are always, you know, it's disconcerting. I know. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's cool. You know, you think you're about to do your job and then you don't. Right. That, that, um, that's the bigger letdown than getting shot. At. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. yeah, yeah. And the other time um, during that deployment, um, our XO, Paul Karen, um, he and I were, so I told you about this, like a, we did our recce mission uh, in yeah. downtown Asadabad. So there was, um a target in Asadaba that uh they needed intel on just as, of this compound like uh can a humvee fit down this alleyway um what does the gate look like is the lock on the inside or outside how high are the walls blah 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 stuff yeah. i like just seemed like a salute report back in the day you know um sure. as you're walking but they were like well obviously you can't make it too obvious um uh that you know we Send a bunch, you know, we didn't really walk around the town anyways. We always drove through to go to another area. Mm -hmm. um, so we're like, I don't know whose idea it was, but Paul came up to me, he threw me uh, a man dress and he's like, hey man, put this on. You and I are jumping in the Hilux with the two Terps and we're driving to Sadabad. Oh my like, God. <laughs> Basically, because we're the two like tall, skinny brown guys. Not too right. dark. <laughs> yeah. Right. You guys can fit the profile. Yeah. Yeah. Can, at first, at, yeah. at a, just a glance, you're yes. good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as long as you don't and, talk to anybody or anything. No, no, definitely not. Uh, so I was like, what do I do? He goes, just hold my hand while we're walking. That's what they do. I was like, okay. I was like, how do I hide my M4? He goes, no, we're not taking an M4. Just take your M9. I was like, with my holster? He goes, no, if you just wear, here's some 550 and tie it around your waist, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is so stupid. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh, but it, I mean, it just it went without um, incident. We rolled down with the um, the Terps, and then uh, you know, parked away from where we were walking. Walked wow. through. Uh, god, it was. I felt trying to be nonchalant, but like, how do you do that? Oh my god, I bet, you know, you you think it's it's cool, but it's yeah. also like. Man, I get smoked any time right now, you know, or just yeah. get rolled up, yeah. or you know, like I, my I'm, head cut off on CNN or what. And, and like I'm walking, like I've never walked with my, uh, you know, because uh, all I had was 550 tied around my waist and snugly, so my Beretta could, fit, you know, get in there. But I knew, like, if I walk at my normal pace, it's gonna either slip out or something. So I like I'm trying to shuffle, but not look like it was just it was a yeah, it was, yeah. It was it was funny, <laughs> but after the fact, but. Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah. None of that stuff's ever funny at the time, but yeah, uh, after, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, like, the worst part was like he got he got the cool he got the shepherd's hat like, oh yeah, masculine hat, and I had like the little square cap. Probably meant like oh, I was okay. a schoolboy or something like that. So it was I'll send you the picture, man. It was funny. I want to see it. <laughs> yes. So that went without, and then you know we came back, talked to Captain Ryan, and gave him the info, and the hit never ended up happening. There's a there's a lot of potentials um during that deployment some panned out some didn't yeah um but it was still like just the constant patrols that went on um not all 
saw action all gone engage but more often than not they did and the actual assad about itself too like one night we uh, came under attack um and that night like i want to say it was billy that was working uh eight tens on the ridge line like to the uh, the rivers to the south to the north of us um yeah so that was cool but, they like shooting rockets uh, at the base yeah this uh shot rockets uh <laughs> the whole time up until this night um you know Daytime activities as normal. At night, headlamps, red light, or nothing. Um, there was, uh, you know, a curtain over the cop or over the CP. So you, when you walked in, you know, you the light wouldn't shine out in the um, into the courtyard area. So, but for this night, he's uh, he decided like for some reason we can have a barbecue, and so there was like, <laughs> so the cooks were like cooking up hot dogs and steak and it was the first like non emery meal we've had in a while um it was after the fourth so maybe that was a wheel because we didn't really get to celebrate fourth um you know and there was like one or two not full of spotlights um but you know just outdoor lights that we had so the coast can see what they were doing and guys can shuffle through and grab their food and you just let your guard down for you know five minutes and that happens oh, so, yeah and two rockets right oh, so like if yeah if they aimed any better because we were all around the cp um there's yeah as soon as and they were airburst like as soon as we heard the whistle like it was like trays were getting flipped guys were hitting the ground <laughs> but i was talking to, i think chuck everett afterwards he's like man i saw your plate hit i was like i reached over to try your safer hot dog <laughs> he's, like, he's like i'm not letting that thing go <laughs> because you're a fool to drop your plate uh, <laughs> You're like, you know, yeah. where to the bunker? Yeah. Way to get your shit. Like, I'm not gonna let this go to waste. But yeah, it's, and that's the thing too. Like after that happened, we're you know just range panties and brown t-shirts and boots, and guys just grabbed body armor, threw it on, got in the trucks, rolled in the town, um, and brought some people back to um, uh, that stayed. You know that later shipped off the bath. I think so. Yeah, it was. It was that was another yeah another cool thing that happened. I guess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how you uh, once you you get that false sense of security sometimes uh, just because you're there for so like it's I don't know what you call it. I, there's a name for it, but you just get day in and day out. It's the same thing and nothing happens and you get your used to it. And then when something and then <coughs> when something does happen, it's like very catastrophic because you're not yeah. you just haven't been ready for it. Yeah. But well, I'm glad nobody got hurt. I mean, that's yeah. 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 During that deployment, uh, like the biggest uh I know some of the guys at Mark I talked about it too. Like malaria just hit the company hard. Yeah. Like dudes were one guy came back, didn't know he had it, um, went to pre ranger after deployment. Um, and in pre ranger was like during the I think five mile run or twelve mile ruck, was just he was just like powering his his way through it. Like he's like, I am not not going through pre ranger and not not going through range school. To the point where he passed out, and I think he had kidney issues for the rest of his career because he he didn't know he had malaria. Like he was, and he thought he just had the flu. He's like, "That's cool, I can, you know, whatever." It's a flu. Um, Hank House got super sick while we we're out there. Oh, did he? Um, yeah, uh, bunch of guys got sick out there, and Damn, and, so and post deployment too. Actually, I think post deployment was worse because it was hitting guys. Um, it hit me after Iraq, um, so almost a year after we got back uh yes yeah so you think so you got hit with you think you got hit with malaria while in afghanistan rotated back deployed to iraq and then it, it took that long to kind of get through your system yeah because i don't remember being um outside of like uh well like we'll get to it later but like when i when, when alf company finally got to the dam after you know everything beacon went through um i was able to, you know, we were able to finally wash ourselves and it was in Haditha Dam, which was cool, but oh, yeah. um, but just the way from the Asadabad deployment, like the SF team that was there, uh, before them, we were just showering with water bottles um, when we could, or it, I think it only rained once or twice while we were there. Um, yeah. And so if it rained and we happened to be on Asadabad, we were, you know, just ran out and lathered up real quick and rinse off in the rain. Um, but the, the engineer, uh, I think gave us like right behind our, I don't want to call them tents. They were like old canopies that we propped up with uh, posts. So it was like an open, open tent living area, just cots under a tarp really. And behind us, the 
uh, engineer dude. He set up like four shower heads for us. He ran, well, he helped the locals run wire or wire water and everything like that. So it was really just like gravity fed water. Uh -huh. Um, but so we were like, cool, we got showers. Um, but like, I didn't see myself, but the story was like guys were patrolling, running down, um, on patrol, leaving the gate, uh, went up, drive towards the Sadabad, and that's where the water would come from. And they were like, they thought it was a rock, uh, in the stream, but for some reason, it, somebody, somebody went up and looked at it. It was like, is a dead bloated donkey. Oh, that man. just like lost all this. <laughs> so oh, that was man. into the shower. So to me, I could put two and two together and realize how yeah, guys, are I don't know. Man, you're lucky that's all you guys got. I mean, yeah, you I know. Anything. Oh. yeah. So that was that. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was that, that was a fun deployment though, as yeah. definitely higher pace than the first deployment, way higher pace. For sure. Um, not as, you know, connected as everybody hoped it would be, you know, but yeah. still it was, it was starting to progress that way as, as, you know, as stupid as that sounds like people were starting to, I mean, that's what you do. You want to get in the fight, right? Right. Um, so yeah, it well, was you're starting there for a you're there to do a job. Yeah. We're not there to, and, you know, it's frustrating when you're, you, you keep going out, you keep going out and there's no, you don't, you're, there's no result. There's no, yeah. you know, you want that, uh, yeah. You want some sort of end state. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that's why I think so that night we got rocketed because of the barbecue. Um, when guys rolled out to that town, they were super aggressive. Um, oh, bet. <laughs> yeah. when they rolled uh, and they brought the guys back, there was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. How dare they, they interrupt that barbecue? Don't they know yeah, yeah. they're Americans? Yeah. <laughs> barbecue is sacred. <laughs> All right. So that was, was that your last, um, OEF deployment before Iraq? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For third battalion, it was. Um, so we got back, um, in September, uh, early October of 2002, went on leave, came back and then like the rumblings of, uh, Iraq started, you know, happening. Um, since we had leave after deployment, we didn't get leave over Christmas. We all stayed around and we pretty much started, it almost seemed inevitable, inevitable, just started prepping for Iraq, honestly. Yeah. Um, it spent and it got in full swing in January, especially. I remember watching in Sergeant G's office, like watching Colin Powell at the UN, you know, bring out the vials. And we're like, all right, well, man. That's so, a, yeah, yeah, it was like full on uh prepping for uh um Iraq at that point, and then uh, so Colonel Bannock was a third battalion commander. I don't know why, uh, we always got the jumps, um, or why we jumped sometimes. You, you wonder, like. <laughs> Was yeah, the like jump, who, was the jump, are, are all these jumps necessary? Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, right. So, but uh, we're, you know, tagged in for newer jumping in. Um, so we did a lot of, it's kind of like, you know, like the Somalia guys, like they knew it was happening. It was just a matter of when. And before right. they even left for Somalia, they were doing all sorts of projects. Like they go out to Fort Hood to mock ups and train there. They, you know, sure, back sure. in Benning. So that's kind of where it was. Like we would just like I remember, you know, yeah, it was man. Like walk through, dry run, dry yeah. night. So that's what it was for day live, night live. Yes, yeah. So I remember we they set up a mock up over by Fryer. It wasn't on Fryer. It was like a small strip outside of Fryer Field. Um, and we literally just walked through phase by phase, piece by piece of the jump, uh, into Iraq, which eventually be H1. Um, you know, they had the engineer tape out, uh, yeah, yeah. At, you know, this phase, you know, I'll, you know, these are the assets, this is the task condition. It's like, but that's what we did. Like we walked through step by step as we would with an MLAT, you know, it wasn't any sure. different, which is the whole point of, you know, like. An MLAT is feels like that because that is what we're doing. Guess what? That is what we did. Exactly. So it was yeah, you know, yeah. We say like you know, Rhino was like an MLAT. This was like an MLAT. It's like that's that's the whole point. That's why we do yeah. this stuff because it, we, if that way when you get there, it's not new. It's not yeah. like, now what exactly. do we do? It's like no, I know what to do. I know exactly. You know, I know go over here and I link up here and I do this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Make it second nature, kind of. Yep. Yep. So 
I remember we did that and January, February, uh, or really January of 03. And then for like the live walkthrough, we jumped into uh, Holland, DZ, uh, okay. Arnold Bragg. It's a huge one out in the yeah. western uh, part of the, the Fort Bragg Ranges. Um, so, yeah, we jumped into Holland um, and then just, you know, did that. We we're there, for, honestly, um, it wasn't MLAT ish, it was just jump, assemble. Um, and then, cause we, on the actual jump, we had engineers with us from 82nd had to engineer company with, uh, heavy equipment. Um, we eventually had like a uh, Navy EOD with us. Um, so that jump with us. So we just, it was really just bringing all the pieces together, do an actual jump, see if it all would work out. And then, uh, so I was still company F Sensio at the time. Uh, Paul Karen was still the XO, Captain Ryan was still the commander and Russ uh, was still the FSO and remember uh, while we were waiting on Holland um, we were running piece by piece through everything uh, Paul Karen, his dad um, I don't know if you knew this, like his dad was Sergeant Major of uh, the unit Oh, I didn't, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I didn't uh, know that Yeah, yeah, yeah so but at this time his dad had a retired and is that actually, you know what his dad was actually a guest speaker, I think, before he retired at one of our Ranger Balls. Oh, and, yeah. like, and if you look at him, he's the most unassuming dude. You Like, no Ranger tab, no SF long tab. Um, obviously, you know, he's uh, airborne, free fall, everything. Um, but just an unassuming dude, small, not not, not a big friend guy. Yeah, Paul, like it's just, Paul's not – he's yeah. unassuming as well. I mean, he was a yeah. kind of smaller dude. So – He's given it, you know, he's he's the guest speaker at one of our range balls. And I don't think and he was a soft spoken guy as well. And I don't think anybody actually knew, like, like paid either paid attention or knew like how badass this guy was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is even more badass than a regular yeah. badass. So while we're on Holland, um, Paul goes, Hey man, uh, why don't you come with me? Um, are you hungry? I was like, Yeah, I'm hungry. Uh he goes, Come with me. And then so we started walking away from the CP and to the edge of the um to the edge of Holland, there's like a little mount complex there. Yeah. Um, and there's this little like I don't know, it was a Nissan or Ford or Ford or Nissan or Tacoma, like small ones, you know, not like a um not an extra cab or just a single cab Tacoma, not even a four by four, just a two wheel, two wheel yeah. drive. <laughs> um and he goes, oh, Come on, let's get in. He goes, This is my dad. Uh he was like his dad at that time was like the like the safety guy over there, you know. Still working over there, but uh, so his dad drove us onto the compound and then like brought us to the chow hall while we're in while we're in J list and our you know our our pro mass is flopping at our side. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he got his chow and that's awesome. Brought brought me and uh Paul back to the DZ after that, and then I think that night or early the next morning, we you know uh, uh broke down and then loaded up and headed back to Benning. So that was pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I, was, I was, I was obviously like a total fish out of water. I had no idea what, like, I'm going to get like either yelled at because I'm here or <laughs> like people are going to look at me like I'm crazy. They were all cool. Yeah. <laughs> they just sat down. It's so amazing. It, uh, yeah. I have very, very, a very small uh, interaction, a very small exposure to it, but it's from what I have seen and what I've been, you know, done there. It's just amazing. It's like the, yeah coolest place i mean and i can imagine why people would want to go there and work you know that's yeah, uh, it seems like a, a phenomenal place to be yeah yeah so that, that was that was super interesting and then uh like i said uh back to reality we got back you know back to benning and then just um when we deployed uh we were lucky enough to not go to i think because alpha company as a whole was at asadabad while the rest of the battalion at that time was at Bath, living, oh. I won't say well, but living better than open air tarps and, you know, cots right. um, and shit water. So uh, yes. I was back in the thought about it too, just like, just even, not even thinking about it, like it, totally normal. Like uh, our latrine, open air, diesel cans with plywood and, uh, you know, just a toilet seat and, you know, cut out and then toilet seat place on it. It was like nothing. Yeah. Uh, but just thinking about it, it's like how you know it's like it, I'm it was, telling you, man, the, the early days man. of that invade of that of the war, 
if you were at an outstation, you were not, you were sucking. I mean, you yeah. were not living well. I mean, I used to, I spent some time at Skin and, um, you know, at uh, you know, like Organy or any of those places. Mm. It was like that. It was like you had to, you had to just figure it out. You had to like, you know, burn your own, burn your own crap. You know, that's it. That was, yeah, that was, it a, was, that was a daily detail. Like, so you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it just had to be done. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, terrible living conditions. So I, I think the um because Alpha Company was out there. The, the entirety of that second appointment um prior you know f- we um got to stay on PSAB, uh prince Sultan air base i believe it was called okay. uh uh and while the rest of the time was like at some austere place like oh, just really? i heard it was horrible like <laughs> the winds the sand it was horrible so we were living oh. fairly large prior to the jump i will say nice. like for what it was i remember billy getting and Trent Joy was with us then too. Um, oh, okay, I'm done with the suit. Uh, Billy somehow getting hands on like an up armored like caddy or something like that. I think it was just and we he'd take us to the jowl once in a while. <laughs> I think it was like a hoopty that was just like heavy. It was like dropped to the ground. So it was so yeah. <laughs> and the, and the glass and everything. And so it was funny. Um, yeah, so uh, we were lucky enough to be there, um, and again, it felt like we were there for weeks, just either refining planning or scrapping planning for something bigger, which didn't happen. Thank God, like the actual jump onto uh, 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 Baghdad International never happened. Thank God, but that was a plan that was going forward. That was going to be a red metal plus jump. Um, Don't you think that, that would have been brutal? Uh, that oh, seems like God. it would have been like. Just kind of a lot of maybe alone going into like that would have been, I yeah, yeah I, I the th- like they say you know like the acceptable casualty rate is like thirty percent or something like that. Just you know hearing that alone, it's like holy, oh. yeah. And I, you definitely yeah, probably, like, probably would have sustained that. Oh, easily, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, and probably why you didn't do it, frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me. Uh, I was uh, like Band of Brothers is one of my favorite series ever. Um, just knowing, even they probably even have worse um, casualty percentages uh, going into what they did, and I was like, man, there's obviously I yeah, never will ever compare to anything like that. Uh, but that's what, but that's kind of like not to, not to say that we, but, but it, it makes me think like I don't know. It, did, it was obviously if we were told to do it, I was like we had, we would we would do it. Sure. Um, but like, is the, just the way, even, you know, 20, it's been 20 years now, like, is, do people not want to see that, you know, like, yeah, that many, I, mean, well, I would venture to say that even when they did it back in, you know, world war two, it yeah. probably wasn't necessary to take that kind of risk. They were probably yeah. just like, we're, we need to do this. Mass force. Like like doing it. Yeah. 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 They were, they, they didn't take any consideration soldiers lives as much as we do now, which yeah. so that's, you know, so that, yes, those guys are heroes and, uh, you know, I have the utmost respect for them, but their leadership at the time probably wasn't, didn't have their best interest in mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, whereas we, when we were there, we were, we had the luxury of having guys that were, they were hard chargers, but they were also like, look, I don't want to get a bunch of Rangers killed either. Or I don't want to yeah. get a bunch, you know, so they were like, let's, they had to temper the plan to be like, yes, we're going to kick, kick ass, but we also want to keep our guys alive. So, you know, they had to. Which is how it, you know the the H one thing probably came to fruition. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I think that was the plan at all. Was so they obviously buy up scale down back to the originality. So H one was going on. Um, I uh, was it Seiko or Biko was hitting not simultaneous, but around the you know it was going to be another jump with I believe Charlie coming again or Bravo Company um, on on H three. Um, but yeah, Alf Company plus an 82nd Engineer Company plus um, a team of Navy EOD dudes, um, and then other strap hangers, you know. Uh, but uh, so yeah, so the jump into Iraq, um, yeah, uh, we we're lucky enough to be again. It was just like planning for weeks. Um, when it finally happened, um, the ruck was a lot heavier because we weren't coming back to where we were. Oh, where yeah. we're in the country for all it was a heavy ass rock band right. luckily um it yeah, was, what was the plan i mean if you can go into it like what yeah. what was it to set up that airstrip or was it to yeah, I mean, it was uh it? so we it was a strategic uh 
airfield for us and Iraq. So they were going to, and they already did um, uh, put barriers on the airfield. So they um, either vehicles that would, you know, park on the airfield, pop the tires, they would dump uh, sand piles or rock piles on the airfield. That's why we had the engineers come with us. So we knew we wanted to hold the airfield um, f- to make it as a, obviously, you know, you had the mechanized force just kicking ass, going, driving balls to the wall into um, Baghdad and H1, H3, everything was kind of out to the west. So that was going to be a, a, there really wasn't much out there um, for, to sustain. So if we took that airfield, it could be a leapfrog point, it, you know, we jump right. here the airfield we can run missions out of there but also like um they can we can bring sustainment in there as well fuel, okay. Okay. uh fuel everything like that it become a just a mini hub um to come from another area refuel rearm if they want to make it a farp as well and then go to other places in iraq gotcha so i think that was a big like the big picture okay <clears throat> you guys um, um meet any resistance there or did, was it pre- no absolutely nope uh, it's, uh at least for h now zero yeah. yeah it was just it was just um the all the runways either they either dug holes in them or they put some kind of barrier in them so the engineers were super busy the jump itself was fine um the same thing like i just didn't track we were jumping lower than usual um i hit my knees like super bad um did you land on the um on the runway or did you land off no land it off thank god okay yeah um and then assembled uh like we just held security around the airfield honestly for like days um before the engineers could finally have it 100 cleared um the cct was able to do their uh runway assessments okay. um and then things are started flowing in like uh um road wing asked to start flowing in um so they can run missions with their customers um we actually had a few a10s remember come uh fly in probably plan with uh those oh they landed ones. there yeah they landed. it's pretty nice. cool um yeah i have the worst war story sorry man i know this is <laughs> no 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 this is awesome i the the fact that's what i love about like kind of what we do not we uh, the collective we like uh, the us like we're like we're, we're gonna you know we have the assets we have the means we have the talent to set up something like that in the middle of nowhere you know and bring in anything we want bring, you're bringing like attack fighter jets into the this austere remote you know remote location um resupplies and helicopters i mean it's just a it's a phenomenal um indication of what we can do you know what i mean yeah. i think it i think it's awesome so then, how long did you guys stay at h1 uh the jump itself was yeah uneventful um started planning things to do um a future emissions uh honestly like the whole time we knew the rest of the battalion was out there um uh, I remember vehicle rolling through to go to the dam. I didn't know the significance of it at the time because, uh, uh, like we had, a, a, while the dam was going on, um, we were kind of uh, doing some rap patrols as well. Uh, we just have companies come out. Uh, we, we stage out of H1, um, and then we take platoon, the company, the company commander would just, task platoons to go out um for patrols then just one night uh we went forward to like an oil refinery um and had like almost a whole company out there at one time uh really i think while we're out there we uh it was kind of cool i had no idea like they had like a, a little town associated like almost like the ore finding workers would work in this little town. So we had to clear through there and then onto the ore finding actual, we just, I think we just shut the oil off, honestly, okay. make sure that it couldn't be used as, cause I remember Captain Ryan going, he's like, Hey, cool. We just cut the oil off to Syria. And he kind of turned around. I was like, is that, is that just, is that real? <laughs> yeah. We just did that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were supposed to do that. I guess number one, we were supposed to do that. <laughs> so, at that point, we were amassed, and, and I lived the company was in a smaller area. So he sent two platoons back to H1, and one platoon stayed out by the ore refinery, and they were doing patrols from there. Um, so I think uh, at that time, it was second platoon and 
the company CP, so Captain Ryan and Russ, uh, the FSO. Um, and then that's where they had the incident where it was April 3rd. Um, so just after the fight of the dam or during the fight of the dam, um, we, they were setting up um, block musicians along a road. And then Russ with the company CP was just up a little bit higher on higher ground. Um, and the platoon had blocking positions uh, down on each side of the road, east and west, I think. Um, and then they were letting cars through, but like they weren't, uh, they'd stop just random ones. Um, it was one car rolled through one of the uh, block musicians and then stopped in between the two. And then at, like a pregnant lady, well, we assumed it was pregnant. She was pregnant lady. She had, um, but this lady came out, started like, waving frantically looking as everybody just assumed she needed help so uh since they were away from block positions closer to the company cp russ grabbed two other guys uh nino and ryan and uh just walked down to see you know he's like cool they made it through the block position shouldn't be a problem um walked down there like i don't know if she detonated herself and then there was like a sympathetic in the car or the car detonated and but that happened. So, and then started getting engaged from uh, further down the road. So it was, it was definitely a coordinated attack. Okay. Um, so that was like the kind of the initiation of the amp. amp yeah. Yeah. That was a yeah, huge, I was a, yeah. Um, so he's already engaged. Um, had to, I think uh, Billy was out there. So he brought in aircraft. Um, the gun trucks were engaging. Uh, and then once everything calmed, like no force came up. I think they were just trying to like cause a disruption, see what kind of mayhem they can do. And then, you know, um, just cause destruction and, and then, you know, make us uh, uh, deal with it after, which we did. Yeah. And then, uh, so you know, had to bring in uh, flights from H1 to pick up uh, um, the remains. And then at that point we switched out platoons because um, there were a couple casualties. Um, honestly, like my, another FO, one of my FOs, um, who's, uh, Russ's, who's Russ's FS, uh, RTO was playing his, uh, RTO. Um, he got caught in the blast, um, seriously wounded, uh, shrapnel just embedded in his abdomen, you know? Um, but he was lucky, obviously, you know, uh, landed, you know, got eventually shipped to Germany. They, um, uh, we're able to uh, save him and everything, but they said, "This is what he said." I don't know if he's just saying it to, you know, that you know, self defamation, you know, to make everything, you know, make it feel seem like he's not uh, a big deal. He is because he survived a, a hellish thing. Yeah. Um, but he's like, "Yeah, man," because because at the time it was it was a few weeks in, and we were still eating MREs. And he goes, "The doctor said the only thing that saved me is because I was so impacted from, these, you know, I couldn't shit." And I was so impacted, like all that shrapnel wouldn't go through me. <laughs> what? <laughs> My view is serious. That is, it's wow. so yeah. So <laughs> he was he was messing. He's a he, I think he's retiring this year. He uh, eventually um, he was in rehab for the longest time. He had really yeah. some really bad um, abdominal issues, um, but was able to uh, stick uh, stick out his military, like, military career. So that was good for him. Yeah. It's always nice when like guys that, that, that sustain like kind of a serious injury, they, the military is good about keeping them in, especially like, yeah. you know, in the soft community, you know, yeah. I remember, I can't remember if it was when, if we, do you remember, I thought it was when we first got over there, but we, there was like a seal walking around with like a fake leg. Do you remember, do you remember that we're in the mess hall at some place? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you weren't there, but yeah. I just remember looking over and this dude was like, he like had glasses on, head on backwards, beard. And he had like shorts on and then like he had like one leg and he was like just, you know, going on missions and doing stuff. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, you know, like yeah. the, most guys, most humans, once you sustain that kind of an injury or even that kind of trauma, you're like, all right, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. You know, but yeah. these, they're like guys like you're talking about, guys like I saw and multitude of other dudes were just like, yeah, I'm getting, I got to get back into it. And they were, I mean, it's really commendable when they were oh, yeah. like that dude. Yeah. Just yeah, especially throughout the entirety of the war, like the guys that wanted to come back, and that it, yeah, it's amazing. Like yeah. most of us would like, yeah, most normal people, I suppose, would say, okay, I, I did my part. But yeah. you know, there's something 
that and, uh, and to their def- to, and in their and defense, they, did. they, they absolutely did. They, did. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that either. I'm not. Yes. I don't mean to say that you know there's anything wrong with a guy who said uh, that's it. I'm tapping out. Because that's, a, I mean, I don't know how I would react. I never got injured like that, so yeah, I can't speak to either either side. But yeah, it's, I, I support the people that say that tap out and like that's enough. Getting blown up is enough for me. Yeah, or losing a limb or an eye or whatever. And then, but I'm also like, I, I hold these other guys in pretty high regard that are like staying in and doing. Yeah. You know, guy like Mark Hurst who lost his eye and he's like, yeah. Yeah. He ended up being a JTAC again and, and jumping and you know just and being a you know, a senior leader in the career field, you know, just amazing guys like that. So, yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a shame about, um, about Russ. I mean, that, that was, yeah. uh, it's like just, a, and I, we kind of talked, I talked about it before with some guys, it's just kind of like luck of the draw, you know, it's like, it, yep. could, it could have been, it could have been anybody. And it just, it just sucks, you know? We, I actually made fun of it. Like, well, not made fun of him, but like we were, you know, he was a good friend. I mean, he was my, you know, he was my FSO. He was my, he was oh, my he's well, big, well, loved yeah. Him, the um, money, yeah. Uh, and so when he got tagged to, <laughs> yeah, like I, was, I gave him a high five. He's like, ha ha, your turn. And then look what happens. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, well, but again, we talked about this last, I, I think I talked about it with Justin Foles. It's like you, you joke, you joke about it because what else are you going to do? You're going to, yeah. you know, you know, it's like, that's, you have to have that mentality. Otherwise you're just going to drive yourself crazy. So, you know, yeah. while you had no idea, he would have probably said the same thing to you and you would have said, yeah. you know, if nothing would have happened, it'd have been fine. But yeah, I mean, it's, but it's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. And then we also talked about like you know, this, the ability of those and not, I don't want to lump all the, those people together, but, the, the the ability of like terrorists to do that kind of thing like like it just the the lack of respect for life and you know they're just like they're sacrificing themselves for what you know like to just to kill yeah. you know it, but i guess i mean look at the, what we're talking about now and we really miss those guys and it, it yeah. does have a i guess what i'm trying to say is it it means more to us to lose our people than it does for them to lose theirs which is kind yeah. of like they're, they're yeah. kind of they have the upper hand in that regard you know they can just you know, they sacrifice people, you know, left and right where we hold each life dear and it, it's a, it has a big effect on us. So, yeah, I don't know. It just, it sucks. I hate it. Uh, it makes me so mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it like. I mean, I know, especially about this country, like the country's gone from uh, really meager beginnings to, you know, we're a superpower and everybody's got a, uh, a great, well, not everybody, but most Americans are fortunate enough to have a a decent um, a life, you know. There's all or, know. or the potential to have one. Yeah, or the potential. Yeah. So it's yeah. just I don't know if they just yeah, the people just go up there and they just give up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they just looking for yeah. I don't know. So, I don't. Know. I'm just glad I live in this country, honestly. <laughs> right. Look, <laughs> yeah, yeah. look at the draw every day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> could have been. Yeah. I mean, it's and that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Just yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so you were at H one, and then mm-hmm. uh, so you just stayed in and around that area. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Um, so after um, uh, the incident over there, um, that was going on. Um, I, we I kind of remember hearing things about the just the heroics going on at the dam there. Um, but you know, we had our own thing going on, so uh, we continued doing uh, missions in and out of H one. And really that little uh, oil facility as well. We just went from point to point to point all around H1. Um, yeah. uh, uh, and most of the time, like, like we drive, that's like the Iraqi army is running. Like there was really not much to engage with. Sure. Uh, you, you know, first, you know, early, the early part of each war was um, just – Everything happens so fast. Like the army is just right. rained. Um in Afghanistan. Well, I don't think they quite knew what to, what they expect. were getting into. Yeah. Either one. You know, they're like yeah. poking the bear and then the bear wakes up and it's like so, Yeah. So they you know, I think they were on their heels. You know, I was I was uh maybe fortunate, unfortunate enough, depending on how you want to look at it, to be a part of where we caught them on their heels. So there wasn't much resistance. Yeah. Um and obviously they started you know, getting back and digging in as the, as the years wore on. Uh, so yeah, like as we were driving, like we were 
actively driving through like we okay we know there's a a battery of uh, artillery over here let's go see okay oh but they let just left the barrels everybody's gone all right we know there's an oh no they left too it was like we were just finding stuff that was abandoned um yeah. so there was not much you know there's not much fight i know uh at least on my part i know q's team uh the rd team was with uh you know gotten a pretty serious engagement because that was all around the same time between the dam um uh q's uh um events uh alpha companies events and then yeah everything was rolling through around the same time so everybody had a different you know perspective i guess sure. or i guess definitely of how things were going because i know they ran into that um at, at one point like star major birch um he started rolling with us as we were driving through looking for you know going from point to point to point looking to um engage and destroy or just come to find out there was nothing, you know, there was just equipment there. We had to destroy because there's nobody else there. Right, um, right. He he started rolling with the platoon, not obviously, you know, Sergeant Major Birches. He's just, yeah. he was not there to micromanage. He was there to snipe guys. <laughs> yeah, snipe guys. <laughs> yeah, he went from the dam where he was sniping guys with their own weapons and they started rolling with us as we started rolling through um, uh, looking, you know, uh, from mission, from mission to mission. And we rolled through one little uh, urban area um, where I think, I don't know if it's Q's team or not, but it was not RD team, rolled through, engaged somebody. Um, and then we were not too far behind them. And the uh, individually engaged was uh, just disabled, you know, shot in the leg. Uh, and then that RD team kept rolling through. Um, and we were rolling through and Birch is like, treat that man. Send him, get him to the road so another vehicle picks him up. And he goes, if we can't kill him, then we have to take care of him. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, that's, he said, well, I mean, that's it. That's yeah. the ROE. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That guy. So, I don't know. People just don't. I, and I don't know if anybody ever will fully know. I don't. And I don't even claim to know him that well. But from what I've heard about him, I think I met him once or twice. He would never remember me, um, or I was in his vicinity and got to hear him, you know, say some stuff. But yeah. uh, from what I've heard and just what I know what a phenomenal individual and just like a guy you know, like he's just a just a tried and true american yeah. soldier you know pretty i mean he's been at the highest levels of the army he's been you know that national level asset he but but like but like in that regard he he still like plays it straight he's not like you know yeah. don't just he could just have been like all right smoke this guy and let's exactly just he could have been like yeah just murder him we'll move on like he's gonna, yeah. you know, but no man he was like just a, just one of the best guys ever you know absolutely just a, just a man absolutely yeah he's like a walking like tall, big, tall, like Clint Eastwood in life that you're, <laughs> you're constantly, but right. it, but better because he's, he's not, a, he's not a character. He's not. Yeah. yeah. He's you know, a real life. Yes. He's he, a real he life. Yeah. 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 So he just, amazing hero, individual. Yeah. 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 Um, so I remember, yeah, we rolled through and they, you know, uh, I think second platoon had to like bandage him up, uh, triage him and then, uh, take him to the road. Cause there was still like, uh, civilian traffic, like, egressing so he made sure he got on a truck and then or a vehicle and then uh came back we kept rolling through um that was the predominance of it and we eventually came back to h1 re uh uh reca uh, revamped as a company um and then i think at that point um it was what jump was in march by early april no it was, yeah because april 3rd um by middle of april like we, I think the, we decisions were made like let's start sending companies back stateside. So we weren't yeah. we weren't in Iraq. At least Alpha Company was not in Iraq very long, maybe forty some days. That's um, what a lot of guys were saying. Like it was just quick. They got yeah. in, you got wrecked it, and then got yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that first deployment it was yeah, and like you know, jump. Yeah, we were in J list the entire time because you jumped in J list. Wow. Um, that's so one thing I don't like, miss. That, that, I because I was in Afghanistan during this whole invasion. Like it was yeah. why I was on and with recce at the time and we're just like doing nothing you know just because that's the main effort was oif mm -hmm. and uh you know but I, I don't envy that part at all i wanted to be over there and i wanted to kind of help out but man being have being having i don't like that chemical threat i think that's like the worst. yeah you know having to having your mask handy and uh, being in j-list all the time is like yeah ugh. Yeah. It, yeah. The only thing cool about it was, you know, you're in Ranger panties and brown t shirt underneath it. So it was oh, right, right. Yeah. horrible. But that's what I say. Like, I like the damn month, month. That's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, for the entire month we were, uh, um, just rolling, wearing that constantly. Um, and then was, did anybody ever, to, was there any threat at all? Did anybody, did they launch anything? Was there any, did you guys come into any contact with, um, was with NBC threat at all after not NBC, NBC, <laughs> not, uh, not intentionally. Um, we were <laughs> leaving. So we, again, got to another area. There was Intel of uh, there, you know, there was, uh, an ex, you know, whatever unit that was supposed to be there again, just came upon equipment, not individuals. So we stopped, uh, started taking, uh, assessment of everything, you know, you know blow the equipment place. What do you take with us? What do we destroy? Um, so during that time, you know, we were just set up a perimeter security. Um, I think it was, it was third platoon. Uh, it's probably Gene, everything we we're talking about what to do or just getting, um, uh, waiting for the guy. And so, you know, we were breaking out MREs and eating them. Um, and a couple of guys were eating on the hood of the, uh, they're, uh, they're the same Humvees, like just totally, um, light skin, yeah. no windows, no doors. Um, they were eating Emery's in their hood and decision made, okay, we can roll back, try another place. So, you know, everybody packed up. Um, and then as we were driving, like guys were like, my eyes are burning. We're like, holy, you know, they start getting calls over radio. Like the driver said his eyes were burning. The TC's eyes were burning. Um, the guys in the seats behind him said they didn't feel anything yet. Um, so we're like, are we getting, oh, is this happening finally? Are we getting gassed? But nobody else in the vehicle or the rest of the platoon was like getting hit. So we stopped and we're looking at them. They're, they're like crying. Um, it, well, they had stopped because he, he couldn't really see anything. Plus no windshield with the dust was like, yeah. he was just caking his eyes and his, uh, eye pro, uh, come to find out, like we we're looking around the vehicle, see what's going on. Like, he, as he was eating his MRE, he ripped open the crushed red prepper um, to dump it in his <laughs> to dump it in his meal and left that packet on the hood. <laughs> so, as though, so, you know, he's driving, there's no windshields. The crushed red just starts flying. <laughs> so that was, that was our, uh, that was our NBC threat. Oh my God. I knew it had to be something like that. Yes. I could. I was waiting to see what you were gonna say. It had to be yeah. like I was thinking like Tabasco sauce or something. But the <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. This is a yeah, NBC. Yeah. Yeah, NBC so, yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but so that was NBC. There, um, Billy was able to outside of the incident with the Russ and Ian and Ryan. Um, later on, we were doing more patrols, more block positions. Um, he and I actually were um, between two block positions. Uh, I don't know why we kept setting up this way, <laughs> but we were between two block positions and uh, we were, you know, they were letting cars through and then we were uh, uh, with the company CP. And we, so, you know, so I, I think we would have the vectors or whatever. So I was just looking through and the vehicle stopped again. I was like, mother. Um, and I, man, I, from the time he had eight ends on to engagement was it felt like seconds. Like, really? I don't know. Yes. I don't know if it was, what was he engaging. Like what, 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 what was, I, I, uh, like what happened? Like, so you were in a, you were in between the positions and yes. then what was the threat? Like, what was he, where were you guys shooting at? I think, uh, another OP called in and said, Hey, um, there's a white tank in the back of the car, like a, like a gas tank, a propane oh, okay. tank or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, Threat enough, you know, big enough threat for us. ROE was outside of, you know, ROE was, um, if it's a threat, it's especially vehicle borne, go for it. So, um, I don't like at that time, like we, it wasn't like throughout the beginning, you know, later on the war it was just like constant caps of aircraft, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, being in the war, they were doing, you know, especially, um, uh, all the aircraft were hidden strategic threats, operational threats, you know, before we were, you know, um, so it, it, yeah, especially if you weren't like on an active mission, you were yes. kind of in a, yeah. in, in a like, blocking position. I, uh, yeah. Maybe they were holding just, uh, nearby, but, uh, Billy had him on the radio super quick. Um, I called him in. I, he, I remember like, I don't know if, uh, man, you gotta talk to him about it. Cause he's like, I don't know if I cleared them, but they engaged. Uh, but it, it was all, but it was all like perfect because the secondaries out of that, like no car should explode that without like, uh, 
extra uh um like ex- explosive material inside a car like there's yeah, no way yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, Wait, it was so you're saying that in addition to the tank, it, it's like they just popped over the horizon, engaged the car, and it was like it was just all like like a fireball. Yeah, well, no, it was just like it was just like a, it was all meant to happen like that. So, like, it was crazy. He was because like, the, they came out of nowhere, like literally. Yeah. And, and Billy, like I, I have obviously a different, different recollection of it. Billy probably was talking to him for hours for all I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just in my vector, like, oh, yep, there's another car. How far is that? Beep, oh, 85 meters. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I could I could have just been not tuned in what was going on. But it felt like yeah, yeah. aircraft, explosion, big explosion. It was like, holy cap. So, yeah. yeah. He was yeah, he was all he was always on it from the, the night in Asadabad to this. Yeah, he was. And obviously, he gone on to do big things too that's um, awesome that uh, he was with you uh in abad and then yeah this one too that's awesome yeah. and that's that's and kind of like the way we used to work um and not to get away from everything but that was yeah. that's what i loved about the rangers was that like you the guy you had in the training you know when you're going through all those rehearsals was the same guy you're going to have on the mission you know so it, it wasn't like a new guy you had to get used to or or whatever which is i like that construct i think that's a good way to go and and i don't think I don't think everybody, there, a lot of other people don't, or a lot of other units don't do it that way, not because they don't want to, but just inherent. It's just for whatever reason, they can't do it. But we have, it's a unique situation there with, you know, first, second, and third Ranger battalions that we, they had the Air Force guys that are embedded with them. And I think it works out really well that way. Like you said, I mean, you, you see the same faces, you see that, you know, you work together. And I mean, obviously, we had a great working relationship. So, yeah, I just think that that construct seems to work a little better than, you know, getting a new guy, you know, yeah. a guy just rolling up at the last minute and being like, all right, you're you're with us. And it's like, who are you? I don't know anything about you. You know, yeah. you may be awesome, but until you show me that you're awesome, I don't know if you're awesome. You know, you yeah. did suck. Too, so, yeah. Like the previous 17th guys leading up to, especially your generation, and then obviously everything they've done since, like, it, I, I, just the way the standard was set for you guys to – interact with your aligned company or and now platoon now um platoon, yeah yeah so it, like just knowing tactical crew field as a whole like you've got so many tasks and so many so it's hard to stay with the same conventional unit at all times mm-hmm. but right. the way you guys were yeah it just it thank god you guys were able to set that up especially moving on you know because that just kept trickling down trickling on trickling down yeah, to the yeah. point where it's it it is just what you do. It's not like, uh, yeah, they've got a, you know, what, what are they doing? A, a jump on a, a Lawson and then rocking back. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you, know, yeah. you did. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, exactly. N- number one, we wanted to do it, but also the leadership wouldn't let us get out of it. You know, it was like, yeah. it was like a twofold kind of thing. Like we're yeah. all in it. We wanted, we wanted to be that guy that we didn't want to be the dude that was like always, missing or you know didn't do yeah. the, the hard stuff you know what i mean so, yeah well speaking of that so yeah. do you want to uh touch on eglin at all or do you i mean we kind of t- we kind of covered that a little bit yeah I, I, think- I think it's a nice time to transition from army to air force like we're, yeah you're talking, it, it you know, really was air um thing, I, you know, conventional tech p so yeah, yeah tell me about that so you went to eglin you worked with yeah. a bunch of great tech p oh, amazing uh, nice. you know legends let's just yes. say and so then, with that that small unit initially was it's just a test and evaluation squadron really. Um, initially it was called uh, JCAS Joint Close Air Point Joint Close Air Point Joint Test Team. So JCAS JTT, okay. it was just set up to test and evaluate equipment, um, TTPs, a lot of doctrine writing like the 309.3, the revamp. Remember, uh, it went from procedural control to then type one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Before yep. I got there, obviously. Uh, but they but had, that a huge, they had a huge part in, you know, making sure uh, it went down that road, you know. Okay. Um, so um, doctrine publications, um, Chuck, especially, I got to go on a lot of TDYs with him with equipment testing. Um, he was light years ahead of uh, where the career field was in his vision, of, yeah. especially with the uh, equipment. Um, so he set up a lot of, uh, testing, like they was contractors and defense companies reached out to him to, you know, have us test equipment. Like, 
Uh, when the dagger first came out, we were doing a lot of testing with that with this interface with laser range finders. Um, we were finding, you know, um, uh, problems with problems with that, especially like people were relying solely on um, the range finder for direction and azimuth, not knowing that the azimuth is thrown off by your equipment. So we were doing uh -huh. tests with that stuff. Um, so a lot of testing of equipment. Um, yeah, it's been, and then it, it went from, so uh, that fell under like, uh, it's not any, around anymore, but GIFCOM um, mm -hmm. used to be in up in Newport News. Um, so they saw all the good things uh, this small team was doing and kind of made it grow and eventually became J fit like joint fires, integration interoperability team. Um, and again, just expanded the roles into um, all services, uh, testing equipment, um, going to training centers, looking to see how they can, like a better term, shorten the kill chain, work the kill chain, you know, yeah. um, you know army air force integration was always a big thing. Uh, yeah. at least on the conventional side. So we, we went out to NTC a lot to like, um, almost be an OTC uh, for uh, the TACBs and JTACs that were um, out doing their training out there. So uh, it was a good experience because um, I had never oh, yeah. been on that side. We rarely did any soft type stuff. So the conventional side was uh, totally foreign to me. And it was, uh -huh. it, was, it was good to see that side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, what uh, a cool, great really unique situation yeah. given your career path, you know, like. Yeah. You, you were able to get a, a feel for what you were going to get into. You know, it wasn't just like yep. a, a surprise when you got conventional. So Yeah. 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 And yeah. At that time I like, I, uh, uh, so I made E7, um, got down to, uh, Eglin and then, you know, met my future ex-wife. We, you know, had my first son. Um, and at that point I, I was trying, to, I tried to go up to 160th. Um, but the, uh, branch manager for 13 foxes was like man until they get the books fixed like they were bringing on bodies that weren't on books and the branch manager was um a conventional guy normally uh the two previous guys of that were, like came from regiment so they knew like all right you can he can throw bodies up there and not a problem yeah, um, yeah. wait so, who, yeah who went up there uh, uh emery went there um the yeah he went there um in like 2000 or early 2001 um and then josh thomas went up there um later um after iraq after the uh, iraq invasion you know up there there's only two there, there was uh those only two like from the company anyways i know okay, well, i know okay. the other guys up there yeah there's be tech right. slots up there oh yeah right yeah. that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting about that stuff okay all right. So yeah. then uh, that didn't work out. That didn't work out. So I was like, well, and then so I was at two years in down at that joint assignment and the branch was like, hey, uh, you're coming up for reassignment. We're going to send you on a MIT team, which was like that was 2005, 2006. Uh, uh, the, they were military transition teams. So they would take six different MOSs from the Army, like infantry army or artillery engineer uh log calm whatever um 12 people so two in each mos bring them together at fort riley kansas just different people from different units that were up for assignment uh make them train for 30 days together uh in an advising role and then send them to like live with uh, like an iraqi battalion uh and you know advise that iraqi battalion okay so, yeah, I was like, that's not happening. I'm not. <laughs> so I uh, I decided to get out. And um, in December of 2006, I separated from the Army uh, and just started, like, no real plan, honestly. My wife at the time, you know, uh, she was active duty Air Force over at Herbie. So okay. we were good there. Uh, my son was uh, almost one at that point, um, my oldest. So it was honestly kind of probably pretty good because i get to spend time with them yeah um, sure yeah so when i left regiment got to eglin uh total culture shock like obviously going from fort benning to an air force and, oh, and right. uh, uh an atc base at that too or afrl base sorry it was an afrl base so it was totally different from I, yeah not even herbie it was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Super so I thought, yeah i thought it would be a great break um because i 
Um, May 87, like I couldn't stay in regiment. Uh, there was already a, a battalion of Sensio who just got there mm -hmm. uh, or just moved that position from within the battalion and uh, regiment. Obviously, you know, I was regiment headquarters was already full up. So I was going to have to go somewhere. Um, yeah. uh, so actually Mo hooked me up and got me this job down at Eglin. Nice. Now that'd be cool. Cause like I said, we were like either deployed or training or doing something for the, for almost two years. And then, uh, I got to get there and it was, yeah, I thought it was gonna be a good break, but I just wasn't ready for that transition. Cause it was like, I'm around uh, nice people. Like the tech piece there were great, but like the air force, like I just, I, I felt like these people are the wars going on, you know, I was right, like, right. Yeah, so well, was, out of touch. It seems yeah, like, yeah, that was, yeah. That, was like, man, it's, uh, that happens though. I mean, it really does yeah. happen. They just um and no hit on them. They're just no, no, no. Like, they, they just yeah. don't they, they don't get they they know kind of something's happening, but unless you're involved, it's yeah. kind of out of sight, out of mind, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You're a little frustrated, I, probably. <laughs> I ran into uh what was it called? Like Dutch Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. Uh down there. Uh he was yeah, uh, the uh one, was, one of the Italian Alos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was yep. cool. I had lunch with him one day. Um, so it was cool to catch at least with somebody I knew. Um, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was a totally different world. Um, and I didn't have a lot of time to process everything that happened in those last two years, you know, because it was so busy. And then hitting the brakes like that, I just, uh, uh, oh, yeah. I was just an angry individual for a while. <laughs> right. For no reason. I, I don't know. I, I was, well, not for no reason. Honestly, like, I go through that. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. we talked about that. I was talking about that with, um, with Brandon Temple and he was, you know, guys, you know, it's like you, you're going, 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 and then you don't know what to do with yourself if, when you're not going, you know what yeah. I mean? You have, and that it can be frustrating and it's just, and we don't, I mean, I don't know, you probably knew about more than I did, but like, we don't know how to process it. Like we don't know like what to do next. So yeah, no, it's totally understandable that they, you yeah. would go through that for sure. I was like in the green, I was in, you know, I was in for living in for living in Shalimar, like on the beach, like on the water it was awesome. But I would just like find myself. I would just like stay in my little one bedroom apartment most of the time. I would hardly ever go out. Uh, so I really didn't take advantage of what I should. Yeah. <laughs> for Walton and Destin. But uh, yeah, so um, all that. And then, you know, I finally decided to separate from the Army uh, in 2000, December of 06. Um, and like I said, work construction for a little bit. Um, got hired on as a contractor at JFIT. Um, nice. So that was good. And then uh, my wife got a job up, uh, was getting assigned to Fort Bragg. Uh, so we moved it there and uh, Dennis like worked it to where I could be like uh, working at the 18th ASOG um, as a, like a JFIT LNO. Um, nice. So I could still get, it was like, he, he jobbed it, man. He was awesome. He would come yeah. up and visit like for a site survey every once in a while. Um, yeah, just a solid dude who helped me out a lot, getting me, you know, make sure I still had a job when I moved. So it was cool. It was great. Nice. And, and then, you know, so being a civilian contractor um, at the 18th ASOG, you know, I met uh, Mike Griff. Um, he was there. Jeff Leahy, got to know him really well and still friends with him. Um, and, you know, just started meeting more active duty TACB versus, um, especially over the, you know, the 14th was moving from where they were uh, behind over the other side of the airfield to across from the 18th ASOG. So I started meeting more active duty tech at the time. Um, and then when I was going through the divorce, um, really regarded getting out in the first place. I don't think I ever should get got out. Um, yeah. So I was like, this is a prime opportunity for me to go back in. Um, and just that whole process took a while. The recruiter, like the Air Force recruiter, honestly didn't know what to do with a prior service guy. So, and I, and I had to rely a lot. I like Chief Long helped me out a lot um, nice. with recommendation letters or just people he knew that could, you know, he could knock on a door for me and, be, and you know, get me through one more gate, you know. And I try a little bit more and then he'd get me through another gate. So he was like instrumental in getting me back in the Air Force or getting me into oh, the Air Force great. back in the service. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was, uh, he was a huge, huge help. Nice. Yeah, and then when I get to schoolhouse, he's the uh, superintendent down there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So then you went to the schoolhouse. Yep. Um, you didn't that's, really need to go any other any other training, really. I mean, you no, kind of mixed all uh, that stuff out. Oh, I had to go see her. Because <laughs> that's it, right. Yeah, people think like regiment is a. Uh, uh, very rarely do I, I don't know about now, but very rarely. Even back then, it was super rare for even squad leaders, team leaders to go through SEER. 
Um, uh, so it just wasn't a requirement for us to do. Um, so I had to go, yeah, I went to, uh, where is it? Up in Washington. So yeah. 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 Did that. No, that's really the only thing I need to, I did that eventually. I, I did that after I got to the 14th, just cause I was, you know, waiting on slots and, um, actually I was lucky enough cause, uh, like started the schoolhouse. Uh, I was already given orders to Fort bliss, the seventh day sauce. Oof. which it is what it is. Uh, but, um, the chief one sat me, you know, sat me to ask me, you know, if you can go anywhere, where would you want to go? And I didn't know the lore of the 14th. Um, or, you know, but I said, if you can get me Fort Bragg, that's cool. Cause my son was still up here. Um, and lo and behold, yeah, he's like, I didn't even get to change the orders. Like I showed up with for still or, uh, Fort bliss orders when I handed them to the CSS when I got to the 14th. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Miss Libby Schillinger, she's awesome. And she's wife, really good wife. Not uh, friends with my wife. And like, she's like, what? You're supposed to be at Fort Blue. I was like, I don't. <laughs> here I am. Come here, so here yeah. I am. Yeah. No, but it worked I mean, out well. I think it is like that. Once you get to the place, it's kind of like, well, you're here yeah. now. So let's sign you in. Yeah. Man, yeah. How was that? How was the 14th? I, that, uh, I've never been stationed there, but I, I went to Jump Master School there at the um, at the group course. And then uh, I've been there several times just like, you know, doing training and stuff. But yeah, it's always been like a real stellar unit. Like there are yeah. a bunch of hard chargers that are like, you know. Uh, absolutely. Especially the young guys. Like I got there in 2011. So it was like guys were it was, you know, in the middle of uh, Afghanistan and Iraq still hottest can be so guys yeah. were someone we you know on their fifth sixth deployment and they've only been in seven years maybe we right. got you know the guys were just and some of it you know they wanted to that you know uh things weren't really well established you know if guys wanted to you know the dwell time wasn't really i get you know looked at hard back then yeah. i think so uh they started cracking down on it more but you know if the guy went on a nine month he'd go on leave come back get greened up again, then uh, volunteer for another one. You'd be right back out the door. So there was hard, absolute hard chargers for sure. Um, yeah. uh, and me being new to the, like I, how the air force works and I, I'll still never grasp around it. Um, but it was, it was great. So there were hard chargers, young guys, new kids coming in, we're getting deployments um, as, uh, as romance, not even as, you know, they're getting romantic because their experience would, you know, just it made it that much better as they further in their career. And, um, so, you know, guys were getting JTAC deployments, guys were getting romantic deployments. People were just deploying constantly, which was awesome. Um, yeah. I um, took over the UTM, stayed there for about a couple of years. And so running a program, I thought it was like my only, so they said, oh, okay, you got UTM. I was like, what did that training shop? I was like, cool. I can run training. I know how to do that. No idea what AFI was. I had no idea what um, the 621s, I think, were the folders. And, you know, everything's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but whatever they were. I, I said, no, I'll just take guys out to the field and run through scenarios or show them how to shoot or something. Totally not was I ex what I expected. <laughs> so <laughs> big learning curve. I thought I did great once I got the hang of it. Um, uh, so I did, did did that for a couple of years, um, which is awesome. Um got the experience I needed. Like if I would have stayed at an operational flight, I would have just Heisman, like all the stuff I should have been learning about the Air Force, especially, sure. you know, cause I came in as a tech. Um, right. uh, so I, there's stuff I should have already known that had I stayed in an operational flight, I probably would have just like, I don't need to, I just need to be a JTAC and deploy, you know, Yeah. yeah. which, you know, yeah, was the case. Cause guys, that's what guys were doing. They were, becoming JTAG deploying and, you know, programs are falling back. Um, mm -hmm. you know, paperwork was, so it was, it honestly, it was good for me to get up there so I could see what, the, how things were supposed to be, around, at least how the air force wanted things ran. Um, yeah. And then I eventually got back down to a flight. Um, and then, uh, 2014, um, we deploy, like we had a small contingent of us deploy with, uh, first brigade out of the 82nd, um, it was the, what they call it, the TRF, the Theater Response Force. Okay. Um, basically, at that time, we thought uh, things were winding down in Afghanistan. Um, yeah. So our really our mission was to go around and basically fob hop and 
help them shut down fobs, let them retrograde while we would hold the fob like super austerely. Everything would be shut down. We'd hold perimeter. They would retrograde back to bath or wherever. And then we'd collapse back in and um, uh, go back to bath as well after they left. Um, so that was the plan going in. And we did that a few times. Um, Gosney was probably the biggest one. Um, most like that was great. That was a, that was still being uh, a kinetic AO, which was awesome. Um, so, but also like it was super frustrating because the EA sauce, like we had to beg really almost like I had to be like threatened being sent back. Cause I want to like, I was fighting for my guys to go outside the wire, man. It was like, I don't understand. That's the part of the air force. They didn't understand. Like, yeah. why can't my JTAX go outside the wire? Like, I, why do I it have almost, to? Would you say it was, it was almost, good, like, almost criminal? Man. Oh, hundred percent. It was uh, yeah. to me, it was almost criminal. Like I, I, well, you know, you've got the P tids. Yeah. Well, once they go out of sight, well then you've got comms and it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, that's yeah. their job. And then it's, yeah. it, Yes, we're trying to protect. We're trying to save lives. We're trying to protect our guys. But at some point, they have to go work. You know, like yes. get them out, you know, do some work. Yeah, and it would bother me, especially coming from regiment, and because we had the working relationship with you guys. Like, I can't like look the S three in the face and say, "No, your guys are more expendable than my <laughs> right. premium Indian staff sergeant." Yeah, they can go, but you know, I have to keep my guys back here. We'll we'll stay in the talk and control from here. That was, man, that was That'd frustrating. Yeah, that was frustrating. We were able to, I mean, it, eventually, like, I think we just finally, I was like, we had to come up with, like, the five W's of why my guys had to go out. And I just finally just cookie cuttered them every time. It was like, yeah, yeah. you know, Pete is not available. Com's not available. It uh, should be the, like. Uh, the JFO uh, doesn't have UHF. Like one W, like, yeah. because the, the army is going because out, they need a JTAC deal with, exactly. them, with them. Yeah, exactly. So it was, yeah. Um, so eventually, like, it, it got to the point where, like, I, I would just honestly send my guys out and then, like, on the back end, just justify it later. Um, so it was good. They, they, they uh, um, Hauser, um, he was a staff sergeant at the time, I think, or a senior airman. Um, he's at 17th now. Solid, okay. solid dude. Um, he's gonna, yeah, he's, he's, he's one to, uh, keep an eye on. Um, because of the great things he's going to do. Like he's, he's on track, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, he was, you know, he's able to go out uh, and a couple of young guys that were able to go out with their companies um, and, and actually get controls in, you know, they were able to call in from outside the wire. I was able to get some talk controls as well. So that was cool. <laughs> I actually stole Hauser's like Hauser was, uh, was, I was getting ready to replace him on shift and like something kicked off. There was a platoon in contact. I think, uh, unfortunately, like what uh, a platoon sergeant um, was killed during this time. Um, so we had, we just had a bunch of assets on. Um, and so I was, you know, sending back, I'm not going to like take over his control while he's, you know, even though shifts over, you know, it is like, I'll just, you know, sure. when you're ready to jump in, I'll jump in. I'll just pay attention right now. So he was uh, working at, um, had A-10s holding, um, was working with the S3. Uh, I don't know why he stepped away from his desk, but uh, so was, he's like, Hey man, can you just monitor real quick? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, time he came right. I launched the 65 and then we were able to kill these dudes and Hauser walked back in. He's, I'm like, I'm <laughs> <so> sorry. <laughs> like no one gets to shoot those. Like that's yeah. like, yes. know, that's like the, the holy yeah. grail of ordinance yeah. to shoot. In like and there was no, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> Like I'm sorry, man. Here's the mic. <laughs> so that was funny, but he, yeah, he, he was eventually uh, able to get a bunch of controls in that rotation. That was honestly, um, especially 2014, um, when the ASOS was stamping down and people going outside the wire. Like we were, we were able to at least get you know the one five hundred four. Like they were, they invited us to their ball. Uh, after redeployment, oh, okay. they did not. They they absolutely loved the sport they had. So to me, that was a success. Honestly, Heck yeah, yeah. Heck so, yes. And I'm still uh, not you know Facebook friends with a few of the um, individuals from there and and Instagram and stuff like that too. So it it's cool to see you know that relationship is still possible. You know, yeah. And without the bureaucracy in the way, so it was that was it was that was a fun deployment for sure. That's good. Yeah. 
it's like a double edged sword though. It's like you're you're happy that they look at you in such high regard because you did support them so well. But it's like you know, yeah, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know, like it, yeah. it should have been that way the whole time. So like yeah. it's you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's my hair lost out of coming coming in hard because it was yeah, that was I never dealt with that dude. Like I I I would never understand that train of thought. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was there's I mean, just a lot of stuff that goes into it and a lot of I think maybe like with regiment, it's very streamlined. You know, you yeah. have the regiment, then you have the battalions, and you have the companies and blah blah blah. But with with air with the air force guys, there's a lot of move. A lot of people have their hands in it. You know, like there's a lot of people that are, you know, that you have to get the approval to let a guy go outside the wire, and then that guy might not have the whole picture, or he might not he might not be from the same background as us. So he he is like like I said before, is like real risk averse. You know, the, the yeah. whole does he really need to go out? I can't I can't afford to lose this guy. It's like look, yeah, I'm glad you think that we don't want to lose him either. But but it's, it's we're not, we don't think it's a situation where the guy's going to get lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like, this is his job. Everybody. Else, and like you said, what does that say about those army guys? Like, well, yeah. this air force, I mean, yes, you may have a, a certain specialty, but the whole point of a JTAC is to, is to protect those guys. Like, so yeah. like that's, if they don't have that protection. Like, yeah, you can do it from the talk, but you don't have SA, you, you know, what, you know, what's going on on the ground. You, you yeah. know, you are looking essentially through a soda straw at this thing. Yeah. Um, you're not, you know, you're not talking to the people around you. You don't have, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I I'm with you. I think it, there's something to be said about protecting guys, but at the end of the day, they have a job to do and that JTAC is there to protect other guys. So, you know, he's yeah. the, he doesn't need to be protected. He needs to do the protecting, I guess. Yeah. Kind of- yeah. He's, with that, yeah. Every, everything that they, they bring, they're just a force multiplier. And it's, it's so, I mean, it's not just controlling aircraft. Like, uh, guys were bringing in, you know, unfortunately for that, uh, you know, we had two incidents. Yeah, the, uh, you know, Earth had two KIAs during that deployment. So it was, it was like I said, it was pretty, it was a pretty heavy deployment. Um, yeah. And at a time when American casualties were really on the downslide and, you know, we were, you know, it's the 80 seconds. So they're just like kicking hornet's nests, you know. Uh, yeah. So, which was awesome. Unf- sure. you know, I say that, but uh, with a, a couple unfortunate incidents. Um, but yeah, they were bringing in uh, medevacs, you know, it's, it's not just bringing in aircraft like they're right. It, it, just you having that radio on your back and yeah. the knowledge to use it in several different ways. Is, like you said, as a force yeah. multiplier, yeah. I mean, you're, you're an outstanding asset. To, yeah. Yeah. To any, so, you know, yeah. yeah. It was disheartening at first, but uh, once the deployment got rolling and uh, I think, Honestly, I think we just wore out the EA sauce leadership to they didn't want to deal with this anymore. Like fine. Yes. Go out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah once when we got rolling, um, it was going great. That was it, it that was a nine month deployment, so it was way, you know, longer than I thought. Or not yeah. longer than I'm used to, sorry. We knew it was gonna be a long deployment. Um yeah, so uh did that and then got back in November. So we uh, deployed February 2014. Got, I got back in November. Um a couple of guys got back after me um and then uh i yeah i got back because my ex-wife was actually training up to do like a, a deployment um so i was like well my son is not gonna have any be you know our deployments are gonna overlap mine at the end hers at, at the beginning so i was like talk to leadership and luckily at that point the leadership switched out so we were good <laughs> with the new ea sauce leadership and i was like hey i and it, part of me felt that i like at that point, we all re, uh, reconvened back at Bath, so there wasn't so much going on. But still, I I felt selfish, like asking if I could go back, like take the first flight out with a, you know, with my yeah. unit, because I was like, one, my, you know, my son's not gonna really have any. Well, he's gonna have, you know, maybe his grandparents up there, and uh, they were gonna come down from Michigan. But I was like, also, his birthday is in between. Is like, is it cool? I I don't know why I just felt selfish asking, but at the same time, I knew it was the right decision. You know, yeah, exactly. Sometimes there's two right decisions and one, you know, st- staying because you're, you want, you don't want to, you know, jump the line for your, some other guys that you know, may need to rotate back. But also you, you have another human that you're in charge of. That's your, you know, he, uh, he's your responsibility. So I, I don't think that I, I don't personally feel there's anything wrong with that. You know, I think you, I think you made the right decision by going back and cause I mean, if it was like closer so even to the latter end, like we knew, like guys were already starting to get manifested, but still, you know, like you're, you're supposed to be the leader. You should be the, you know, first one there, last one to leave, 
I, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, army mentality. But it, if it was like maybe closer in the middle of deployment, I probably wouldn't even mention it. But at the end, yeah, I, I think these are winding down. Those, you're rotating yeah, out. Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah, that that got done in uh, November of 2014. And I got back, and then uh, uh, what happened after that? Yeah, just the the deployments were dying down. Honestly, um, like people were starting to scramble. Like even people were even volunteering for like the year long, like. Um, NATO level, like at uh Maseri or down at CAF or something like that, yeah. um, just for deployment. So, um, that was 15 and 16, yeah. And then I, I actually eventually 2016, I went over and took the ASOC flight, which was another like new thing, yeah. No, no, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was a that was a trip, that was fun though, honestly. Like, you learn something new, it's a new leadership challenge because the majority of the personnel in the ASOC are not one Charlie fours. Um, it was right, all three right. D's, um, ABMers. Like I had no idea. Like they were all off in the peripheral while I was in the 14th, you know, but, sure. like, you know, but actually dealing with them day in and day out They're honestly, they, they want to challenge like everybody else. So it was, it was cool. It was, it was, it was, that was rewarding for sure. Taking over that flight. I was able to bring in tech P, you know, some JSX I wanted. Um, and we were, you know, their um, status didn't stop. Their jumping didn't stop. Anything like that was that was part of the agreement, and they got extra trading on the side, so it was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people shy away because it's like the higher level, you know, and it's like yeah. not the cool the cool guy mission. But you, I was talking to somebody else about this. You learn um, a different aspect. Like, kind of like you don't get that picture when you're like you said when you're down at the 14th or you're down yeah. at the squadron level or even down the company or whatever you don't see what they're looking at. They're looking at this big, bigger picture and how to deconflict airspace and like, you know, just, uh, you know, do the things that you take for granted yeah. as a guy on the ground, you know, like, yep. I just want this air and give it to me. And they're like, there's a lot of moving pieces that, that has, that have to happen that they all have to line up and be coordinated and by a, a bunch of smart guys to make it you with your little piece, you know, that to help yeah. your little piece out. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a, it's a big animal. An important thing too. I mean, I didn't. Well, I, yeah. I, I didn't realize that. Word. I mean, no, yeah. Right. It, I mean, we're spoiled because I mean, right. even, even in 2014, even you know, there was you know, just dudes were flying in circles. There were caps, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you've got this keypad, and I knew like you. Used to, so I, you know, outside of you know, soft missions going on that would pull them as priority. Uh, I knew like nine times out of 10, if I wanted something and I would just, you know, it would be there in minutes, you know, right. super quick chat and it was there and I didn't care how I got there. I just knew. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you didn't yeah. see what kind of strings. Totally, totally, to totally, or... totally take it for granted. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 But then you got to get up there and see what, you yep. know, see how to pull back the curtain and see how it all works. And yeah. yeah. So then, then you went from ASOC to, did yeah, then you so, went to Korea? Then, yeah, uh, so there's still, you know, uh, they were like reconsolidating all the ASOC. So I took over the flight, and then in 2017, um, I went to Korea. Um, uh, was there for a year until 2018 at uh, Camp Red Cloud. That was okay. uh, that was pretty cool. We was a cool little town. I was older, yeah. married, uh, or you know, remarried again at that point with another kid. So uh, did, I didn't live it up as others. Which was fine with me, totally fine with me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Control there. I was at Weijian Bu for about six months. And yeah, back in the mid '90s, and uh, yeah, it can, it can be as off the hook as you want it to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. like you, I was a single dude, and I was very susceptible to, you know, uh, suggestions. So, yeah. you know, yeah. So it was like we were, yeah. But I can understand. But I, I would love to go back as a you know, an older guy, like kind of like you mm -hmm. were just to kind of see it in a different way, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think I experienced it uh, as much as I could have, but how was your, how was it for you? I mean, what, it was cool. You, I, um, like, and... Oh yeah. Yeah. Like outside of like, uh, so honestly having the ASOC experience going to working at division level was oh yeah super beneficial, even yeah. though it was with uh, another, you know, uh working with the korean asoc even though sure. uh, yeah it was crazy like the exercises there like were so frustrating <laughs> <laughs> even just controlling uh was frustrating you know trying yeah, to yeah. yeah but it was it was cool um working at division level a lot of uh 
warfighters and staff X's and, you know, right, right. comics is going on. Um, that, and then controlling out there was awesome. It was great. Yeah. Um, you I, know, I loved it. I did like that part of yeah. it. Yeah. Like uh, you could outside, go anywhere. Yeah. Like, you know, just pull over in the well, side of the road. Like just the lengths you had to go. No, I only, really, I guess here at the States too, because um, there's not a lot of squadrons around uh, army bases anymore. So you still have to travel. Um, so yeah, it's real insane. It's what's the the only crappy thing was the the one live range you had to drive like four hours one way to. I forget what it was called. I just brained up everything, honestly. Was it nightmare one live or range. was it? Uh, yeah, it was further south. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Though. Yeah, yeah, but so you know, even if it was just like fifteen minutes to get greened up, and then <laughs> drive back four hours, I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, but. The job was cool. Um, seeing things at that level, especially um, in that theater, was cool. Um, right. Like and like on um, the non-job side, like you know, got to go to the DMZ. That was pretty neat. Um, going to Seoul, going down to uh, uh, what was the base? It's not like the Dragon Lodge. It was like a. It was uh, where was it? Not Casey. Wherever it was, it was like this uh, American hotel on a small. Or is like the oh, it's really um, nice hotel on uh Young Sun. Was it Young Sun? No. Young Sun, yep. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool to go down to. And you had uh um Itaewon. Was it Itaewon outside Itaewon, the gate? one yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that was cool. I it went down there a couple times. Uh again, nothing crazy. Uh but yeah, it was cool. It, the, the thing I learned about it was um those places like Itaewon and like Seoul and all it was mm -hmm. so much different than Weijambu because you're like Weijambu yeah. is kind of like a little small community or like a small town then you go down there it's like it almost reminds you kind of like a tokyo or whatever yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. 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 it was cool like because it's such a walkable town it was huge mm -hmm. it was huge but like you could just walk anywhere it was great like yep. right outside the base um you know go down osan a couple times obviously with like uh just you know pt test meeting with group um stuff like that um i i uh, forget what side it just it was just bigger i didn't like it right, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to go back to my little safe bubble <laughs> right <up. laughs> uh, the air force was in the area there so it was nice um yeah, yeah we were, i was honestly um as i was leaving we were in the process the squadron in the process of moving down to humphreys um okay. and red cloud was closing so luckily i missed wow. um yeah by that like i missed in, in july left so like by that Christmas, I think they were already fully down in Humphreys, I believe. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. But it's cool. Like even like even TRC, like it was so small, but it was cool. Like the yeah. bunker, like you that uh yep. uh the trail that went along the outside that you walked up to the bunker. There's so much yeah, it's cool. cool. Such a small town, yeah. Cool little cool little neat. post. So you spent a year there. Spent a year there, there, and then halfway through, um uh Actually, near the end of it. So I found out uh, I made master. So I made master before I left Korea. Um, and then got assigned to um, the 10th Ace Oss at Fort Riley. So left Korea to July 2018. Uh, came back to North Carolina. My family moved up to High Point um, while I was gone. So my wife's from um, Asheboro or okay. outside Asheboro. So she had family up around that area. So uh, moved her closer to family. And she was going to school and working. Um, she was just separated from the Air Force. Um, so she, you know, school and working, taking care of the kids. Um, I had both my kids, at that, uh, sons at that time, living with us. Um, and then, yeah, so I got back from Korea, came back to North Carolina, packed up the house, took a little leave to see family. And then, you know, we drove out to uh, Kansas. I was there for How was that? Kansas, honestly, uh, different uh i enjoyed the area the unit was um great we had a great commander when i got there colonel healy was awesome uh the do was awesome colonel chung chang sorry um my flight commander um he's still in he's up in washington um captain woodruff great dude um like 13 limas uh when they they started coming around 2011 2012 probably right i think yeah, so, so. he's yeah um He's a, he's, he's a great guy. Like he, uh, I just don't think there's enough, like there's building up mentorship in the, at, with 13 Lumas to uh -huh. 
like generation to generation, you see them getting better anyways with leadership. Sure, sure. Um, yep. So he's at that point where he's going to be a stellar dude as he progresses. Nice. Um, really great guy to work with. Um, and it just the, like a lot of young guys. So that was super rewarding because you got the, I got the mentor, the young guys, um, help them out along with their career. Um, and then uh, I had a, were, you like, the, were you like the – like I was a, uh, the or so you when I initially got there, I was the training flight NCYC, but then we okay. turned into um, Charlie flight. So the training okay. flight kind of went, the training kind of went back to the operational flights and then training flight, we were able to keep most of our guys and become an operational flight. So we supported one of the, I don't see that. And that's the thing, like with the whole, uh, in the conventional, my experience with the conventional ASOS is, is like, there is no direct, um, support with like your I, like if you ask me who i'd say i supported first id like i can tell oh, you right. what, like, what brigade I, yeah yeah even with, know, that's like the division level like it's yeah. this division somewhere so yeah. Yeah, i'm yeah. yeah so uh yeah i know this yeah it's a weird i think it used to be like when i first came in we we tried to do that like matter of fact i forgot to mention this when you mentioned uh first sergeant martin he and i were in panama together when i first came in like he was down at the first of 508 uh, in Panama. That's I met him down there. He was like really? a, he was an E5 or E6 at the time. Yeah. So when That's I got nice. back to when I got back to ACO and I saw him, I'm like, he's like, I know you. And I'm like, yeah, man, we're in uh, Panama together. But uh, back back then, we, you know, I remember our guys supported the 508 and you know, some other, you know, another unit <clears throat> or another section of another flight in our squadron supported the first of the 50 or. 50 to 87 or something like that. Anyway, yeah. we were more aligned with our army units back then. And I think yeah. it kind of grew away from there, not out of maybe not by design, maybe it was, but it seemed like there wasn't enough of us to go around. You know, it's kind of like the old SF uh, construct yep. where there's so many ODAs. We, we don't have enough people to support each ODA. So, okay, what ODA is in the fight? All right, now we're going to send a JTAG with those guys. So um, yep. I think it kind of got now, by the time you got to the 10th, it was like, yeah, just this division's getting supported some way. Who's in? Yeah, uh, and, and really know who's gonna first ID? They've been. They were. Uh, they had. Um, they were big in Iraq. They were. Uh, you know, they had a, a lot of deployments in Iraq. And yeah, one, yeah. Once that stopped, it, obviously nothing in OAF. Or I'm sorry, OEF. Uh, and they started picking up the UCOM taskings. So they would send. Okay. Uh, division like they would split their division um cp and like there was all constantly a division cp element um in poland like just oh, okay. rotating for years so it, you really couldn't um really get to know because and really it, it felt like as a whole the 10th asos literally just supported division cps because we were as they were we, uh we uh as they were doing their like polling taskings, we'd send elements to support them as well. So we couldn't like just obviously just send like uh, command elements up there. So we'd have to take uh, flight uh, leadership, um, yeah, you know, yeah. captains and mass sergeants, and then whatever other airmen and sergeants would want to uh, attack. So yeah, it was it was it was like that. It was really just like what can we support? Who can support it? And we're really just supporting um, their their UCOM tasking. Okay. At the so, division level, pretty much the last thing I did um, at the 10th, it was like October 19. And I got back, I think we got back January or February. My portion, like it was supposed to be nine months, but um, mine and a couple other guys, it was only like four and a half months because we were rotating guys in. But yeah. like uh, it, earlier that year, um, like I said, uh, there's just the bucket list. The thing I wanted to uh, do is that I always wanted to see how I would do. Um, yeah. So I asked like, Luckily, there was another um, tab um, staff sergeant uh, in my flight, and we were the only two in the entire squadron. Um, so I was like, "Hey, man, you hear? Have you ever heard of best ranger competition?" <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Marco Severa. Uh, he's, he, I'm pretty sure he has. He's like, "Yeah, well, I was like, you want to do it?" <laughs> uh, and he's a he's a young kid, hard charger. He's like, "Absolutely, I don't know what it is, but let's leave right now." So he's that kind of kid, you know, just. No, hold on. Yeah. First, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, so I asked my flight commander um, if that was, you know, a, again, a, a, for me, it felt like another selfish thing I wanted to do is like, 
can I take myself out of flight for a while to train up? Well, yeah, train up and, but also for a few weeks, you know, be gone um, yeah. for this pursuit that I want to do. Um, he was hundred percent on board with it right off the bat. Um, you know, talk to the DO. Um, uh, he was on board with it and eventually, you know, the commander was cool with it too. And part of the reason was like, I, I felt a little selfish because there was like a war fighter, um, scheduled like right in the middle of the competition. So I was like, dude, we're already short, man. Like guys, you know, it, it, so I was like, man, this is, but this is my last one. If they were cool with it, then I was like, cool. I'll, you know, I, I, yeah. we'll try out, we'll try if, if they were all against it and you're like trying to fight to get it, but yeah. everybody's supporting you. Yeah. And it's a war fighter. It's not like, yeah. come on. You know, it's I, not like it's like or death, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, I trained up for it. Um, a lot of lessons learned in the train up things I would have done different. Um, and the competition itself was like, we had to be out there a week before the competition started as like a, so there's like a whole process you have to go through. You have to get checked off on certain items, you know, army, like, um, you've, uh, you have to get checked off on fast roping. Um, you have to walk through uh, tests, condition standards, pretty much of every event, regard, you know, yeah. of all three days. So there's those. That yeah, that'd be dumb. They're like, okay, go uh, put this 240 in operation. You're like, yeah. 240. And they're like, get the, you know, yeah, well, you'd have no, to know. Well, uh, that is, so like the, the equipment um, and the ranger tasks, like, you got to know that stuff going in. Like me and Marco, okay, we would okay. go to, uh, he, thankfully he knew, uh, brigade armor and we would go down there and mess with the 240, mess with the 50 cal, um, nice. mess with, the uh, whatever the new, I forget what the new 203 is that, you know, um, so we were able to get hands on with that, it, but it's like, cause some units don't fast rope. Um, right. So yeah, they make point, sure everyone's yeah. safe they're like that. Um, one thing, thankfully they, uh, the Prusik climb, and the whole, the whole Prusik Tower, like yeah. we spent two, I think like two days out there, thankfully, because we just didn't have the capability to do that out in Riley. And it was still, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, if we would have made it to the Ranger Stakes Day, like I probably should have embarrassed myself on that Prusik climb. Um, that seems like the hardest thing. I, I mean, honestly, out of everything, yeah. that Prusik climb just seems impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody, if I hadn't seen people do it, I would say, yes, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It I mean, is. put a ruck on my back. Let me run. Let me yep. do whatever. But that Prusik climb is crazy. Yeah. So you guys, yes. okay. So yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. Sorry. But basically we, uh, right. got the mission trained up, uh, got out there a week prior as planned. Um, our equipment was lacking, man. Um, it's, it's an army competition. So everything has to be. CIF issued by NSN um, in the proper uh, camo pattern. Like I had a poncho liner, a woodland poncho liner that was a proper NSN, but it wasn't the camo pattern. Like, you know, they, they said it had to be at least an ACU pattern, something within the last decade, you know, I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so do we like every day when we got released from, um, the uh like the walkthroughs we'd like hit victory drive and like go to all the surplus shops oh, ranger joe's yes yeah, ranger joe's uh, <laughs> everything there and be like you know what do you have you have this you have this um so we went out of pocket a lot uh, i was bit. gonna say that probably got a little, little, yeah, like, a little well no, like the the most fixing thing was the ruck like we thought i thought maybe just now i could i announced back and you know we um the bars issue ruck um I knew wouldn't fly, but maybe we both had Alice back so we can bring that. Dude, it had to be the Molly Ruck. So we were like, They wouldn't let you use an Alice back. No. Really? To be Molly Ruck. Yeah. Wow. So luckily, the cool thing was like, uh, was it? No, it was another. Uh, it was, um, I think, Gen oh, it wasn't Ranger Joe's, but it was another one down the road, US Cavalry, maybe. Um, the guy's like, Hey, you know, it's, you know, it was 300 bucks to buy the rucks, but he goes, If you return it, next week and you wash it first you know you you can sell it back to me and we got most of our money back so that was cool oh nice Good yeah deal. so he was, he was he was super cool about that um yeah so a lot of lessons learned um from equipment to train up and then the start of competition man it was awesome like it as much as i uh hate on the army and their timelines like everything you know made sense uh yeah, yeah. just the way they especially the way they do it um, I didn't want like part of it was done because it was a personal like um it's just personally I wanted to see if I could 
stack up, see if like, yeah, I was in regiment. Yes. You know, I went through rip uh, deployments and all that and black and tambourine went through that whole process. Yeah. It was like, <clears throat> I don't know for something, something felt like I just had to like, yeah, uh, for sure. yeah, yeah. There's just part of me. that was like, I, I, maybe I owe it. Um, like the, uh, there's just, plus see, there's just like a, a reverence that comes with that competition yeah. and the history behind it. Um, so I just want to be part of that, honestly. And, uh, it's like a secondary too. Marcos, um, was an awesome partner to have. Um, but also too, like we were the only air force team that, that year, like the year before there was, there was a coast guard team. Like oh, they were really? the only sister service team. So like very rarely do they get an entire sister service team. I don't think outside of that coast guard team and us, and we, I know there's been gunny sergeants from the Marine Corps that have participated and won, but they were teamed up with like an RTB dude. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, last year regiment took like, I think top six or top seven spots and the air force captain was in mm -hmm. it from the 17th, just a stud. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's partnered up with the regiment um, army officer. So, uh, which helps a lot because oh, yeah. as much as, as much <clears throat> as you get uh, immersed in the Ranger, culture or mentality or whatever you're still an air force guy you're not exact you know you're there's mm -hmm. just a little bit that the army guys have an edge on you just because they live it day in and day out you know so i can yeah. see how yeah yeah um, so, but, that, but but it's cool that you guys were an air force pure team yeah 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 that's cool and yeah you it call, was, uh bully at all and get any advice from him uh no man i'm gonna <laughs> tell you he's like what are you thinking you know you, <laughs> you should embarrass yourself now yeah. uh so yeah, we did that, and you know, the morning uh, competition kicked off. Everything was going great. Um, we actually do. Um, we were doing well. We were mid, mid, end of mid pack, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, but we got to the litter carry. So it started off with like a. You know, all starts with an unknown distance run, and the first that's normally the first thing. Uh, mm -hmm. That year it was, uh, I believe, a total of eight miles. Um, but at the four mile mark, we thought like we were running, we saw headlights, people milling around. I was like, sweet, that's the end. We were looking at our watch. It was like, okay, we're about 30 something minutes in. We're doing good. Um, we get to the truck. They're like, here, put on this. You know, it was an old IETV, IOTV, like weighted vest. And they're like, keep going down that road. Oh. Like, Damn it. <laughs> keep going. And, it, uh, and it was funny. Um, so we finished the run. Um, we hear, uh, Sher remember Sherrick? Yeah. Uh, Ryan, uh, he helps out uh, quite a bit too. Um, cause we didn't have nods mounts, uh, as well for the 14. So he hooked uh, us up, uh, got us. Um, so that was crucial. Um, and he was on the sideline. Uh, we were getting, so the teams were starting to pack back up from the run, waiting for Malvesi, you know, teams run through. So teams are starting to, uh, pack together. And there's, um, where it's like, Hey man, do you hear that team from regiment? Like some guy passed out after the run, like, there's already one team out and it's a regiment team. I was like, get out of here. Like the dude must've just like, they must, I think they came in first on the run. And then one guy just like, he cat it out. Like exhausted. Just, yeah. exhausted. Um, turns out not the guy that passed out, but his partner, um, won it the next year. Oh, right on. We, no, 2021. Sorry. Cause 2020, okay. I wasn't one. So 2021, I believe he won it. Um, he was with the regiment at the time. He's a, uh, officer, but I'm like, I got to tell Marcos next time I see him, I was like, come to find out we beat a best ranger winner because he, <laughs> he didn't make a pass the run. Hey, you got to hang on to something. Yeah, man. so that's, yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, took the run and you do my LVST and then you go to a litter carry. And that, I mean, that's what broke us, honestly. Well, I mean, we finished the day out. We didn't, um, we didn't, you know, we made all the way through the ruck and didn't make it through the ruck, uh, didn't make the cut after the ruck because they have to cut, I think like 28 teams the first night. We were oh, okay. We were definitely in that cut. So, oh, okay. Oh, so if you don't make like, a certain time, you're listening. Yeah, like, we're yeah. only taking this. Anybody yeah. who finishes. Yeah, it, it's known like uh, <clears throat> after the ruck, which ends day one, because you start like around 17, eight, uh, 17 20 hundred uh, that night, and it goes into early morning. And when they stop you, it's either, yeah, keep going or no, get on the bus. So, okay. and we bring you back to uh, the barracks. Um, so, yeah, we're, yeah. It is. Well, I mean, we tried. We made it all the way through the end of the day, so that was good. I was happy about that. Yeah. Um, 
I, I see, mean, yeah. and, and <clears throat> the fact that you tried, the fact that you trained up, you you know, because that, I mean, as much as you have been exposed to it, it's still, there's still a lot of unknowns in that competition. I mean, and it's yeah. not like, um, it's not, there, there is nothing easy about it. Like there's no, like, you know, it's, it's all hard stuff to do. You yeah. know, it's like just amazingly hard stuff to do. Yeah. So just the attempt is commendable for sure. And yeah, yeah, that's, I, I remember, I can't remember how I found out, but I remember seeing your name on a, because I was getting like stuff, you know, like I'm on the, all those web pages or whatever. And I see like, you know, best ranger participants or whatever. I think I saw you on there. I was like, all right, cool, man. <laughs> um, yeah. I thought that was really cool. So then, um, so you did that. And then yep. when did you, how, what happened? Did you end up retiring soon after that or when yeah. did you get out? Um, so that the competition was April, 2019, uh, still the 10th. And then, so that got done. And then, uh, we're building up for that deployment. So the deployment into Poland, was October 2019 to end of January, early February 2020, like right as COVID was like starting uh -huh. to become super scare, you know, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we got super lucky coming back because there were guys just like a few weeks behind us. Like, I don't know if they'll, you know, we were like, we we're on the phone. Like they might have got stuck. Yeah. We we're like on the phone with like embassies to try and uh, how can they get out? You know, we we're kind of overblown it, but like, yeah, we don't want these guys to, um, so come back and then uh, I actually pushed the, re you know, I applied for retirement um, while I was uh, in Poland. It was just at that point sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> I was, uh, yeah, I think it was just time, man. Um, my, like my son, my oldest son uh, with my first wife was, uh, there was all this constant like custody stuff going on. Yeah, so I yeah. finally had him with us. Like, um, he was living up for a few years and I was like, well, uh, I, I, we didn't like, we Manhattan, Kansas was, it was nice, but it just wasn't for us. I don't think, um, uh, yeah, it was time. Um, I didn't know, we didn't want to stay in Kansas and, uh, I was getting frustrated with the air force, honestly, too. Like I was, um, it was just, wasn't what the job being tech, being JTAC was what I expected. The, sure. You know, the young kids, um, that I was, you know, able to mentor that let me mentor them was what I expected. Um, officers that, uh, wanted my advice, everything that was great, but the air force as a whole, as an organization, just, it was frustrating. Um, part of it was me, like, I wouldn't just, that part of me just wouldn't conform to it. You know, <laughs> right. I didn't see a need for associates. So I was like, why do I need, you know, just the whole. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, you're, yeah. Community I hear college. a lot of guys say stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So the whole community college air force, like I, I, I you need that to get, to the next level, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. So, uh, it is what it is. Um, looking back, I probably should have to avoid some of the stuff I'm going through school, but I just, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was done. So, and, and uh, I was time, it was just time. I was getting older. Um, uh, yeah. I so mean, you think about it, dude, you, like you told, like we were talking about, you made E7 twice. So yeah. like, it's not like, I mean, that's, a, that's a pretty good career. I mean, especially like all the stuff you've done, you know, there's no, I can understand how you're like, all right, enough's enough. Like yeah, yeah. when you get to that point where, you know, you're just uh, not burnt out, but maybe, but it's more like, it's just, there's some other, other stuff to do. You got a yeah, family now, you yeah. have young kids. I mean, you know, and I don't want, like, I, I don't want to uh, like just fake it um, at work. You know, sure. if you like, if, if, the, if the drive's not there, then you're like, you're not doing anybody favors, especially yourself. Like you're, if you're just going to, go through the motions and you're leading these kids the wrong way then like there's you know they deserve better than you faking it so for sure yeah, yeah. so my heart wasn't it honestly my heart wasn't it so i mean that's that's commendable in and of itself yeah. that you could that you identified that and you're like all right i could i could just half-ass it or i could step aside and let somebody who's still hungry get in here yeah. and you know do it you know yeah because you got to think about it like the guy your peers at that point or not really your peers because you, you know, you kind of had to start at a lower level and yeah. get back to, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. you know, the guys that are coming, that are at your level, you're, you should have been for all intents and purposes, you should have been any nine at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, so, retired. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, I always thought when I, I didn't know you were going to do that. I didn't know you were going to be a tag P. And when I heard that, I was like, so I was like, that is the cool, that's, that's one of the coolest things ever, especially a guy I know, especially I've already served with you and I, you know, 
we were already friends and we already did all that stuff together. And then you come over and, and, you, and you were able to do that and get back to a, a, a senior NCO level. I thought that was really, really awesome, man. It was really commendable that you did that. Nice. That's It's hard. I think it's hard for a guy. I think it's hard to get that level anyway, let alone like any kind of, you said the culture shock was there. You're already ingrained. Like once you're in E7 in the army, you're yeah. pretty ingrained. That's your mentality, you know, and then having to come and just do a shift in this culture. Um, I think you did it right, man. I think you did a good job. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah, awesome. like, when I got to a squadron, I'm like, there's a first art who's not my idea of a first art <laughs> right. superintendent. And there's an op suit. I was like, that's like, and ASOS is roughly the same. Well, the 14 is fairly big. Like that's roughly the same size as, as an infantry company where they do have a first sergeant doing all those three hats. Yep. Un, yeah. You know, and take, you know, and in charge of 130, 140. So yeah, I didn't understand. Yeah. So I was just frustrated and it was done. So yeah, I decided to retire. Um, and my wife, um, was working. She's got her career going on now. Like we're back in the Bragg area, not, uh, in Rayford. Um, so she's got a awesome career going on right now. Um, and I'm just, yeah. So I'm just Mr. Mom and going to school. It's, it's nice. pretty good. Yeah. And that's another, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up too, because there's a lot of, uh, guys I talked to that have gotten out and they, um, they are torn because they, they feel like they still have to do something, but I'm, but I mean, you got another, there's another adult in the house that has goals, has aspirations maybe has a better job than you ever had or as far as like, you know, making money or stuff. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's time for to, and they have been with you through all this whole time. Sometimes it's, it's a good thing just to step aside and let them shine. And then you kind of like, you know, yeah. take over the more menial tasks, I guess. No, absolutely. Like, and I was offered, like I was offered uh, from old friends and, you know, friends I made along the way, like contracting gigs, like, yeah, you know, you know how they are. They're fair. Sure, sure. I was like, I was, you know, talking with my wife. I'm like, yeah, the money be good. Like, but why don't I just stay in? Cause I'd be gone just as much, right. um, working these jobs. Uh, you know, what's the point of me retiring then? Cause <laughs> right. the whole point is for me to stay home. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that, so I turned down jobs. Uh, and like I said, like, it's not, I turned down it because, uh, part of it, my heart just wasn't like, I, I was just done with the military. I didn't want sure. to, you know, I just, so I, you know, I, I told a close friend this too. He was like, "Hey, man, like, I, I, I can't not thank you enough for you even considering me for this job, but like, I don't want to, like, I'm gonna go in it half-hearted, and I don't want to, like, I would represent you if I were to take this job, and if I took this with my heart not in it, like, I, I don't want that blemish on you. So I was like, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, it was, it was real like growing up moment for me. Sure, um, sure." Yeah. And not only that, but like you have to think about your own happiness too. Like, yeah, you, know, <clears throat> you get in there and you grind out another what ten years with this guy, and yeah. you know you're not doing him any favors, you're not doing yourself yeah. any favors, you're not doing your kids any favors because you're gone all the time again. Yeah. So like now you have now you can dig in with both feet and you know parent these kids the way they yeah. need to be parented. You know, it just it, we all have paths we go down, and we yeah. all know the right path to go. And I think you're, I think you you're following the right, the correct path, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. It's good. Thanks, man. Yeah. The only thing I would say is like, so I'm in school now. I'm getting, a, um, I'm, I'm in a community college up in Pinehurst, uh, North Carolina. I'm getting a health and fitness science. Um, I'm in health fitness science program. I'll get my associates, associates of that this May. And then they'll help me get my like personal or personal training certificate. So I'll become a personal trainer. And then start working or start um, going to UNC Pembroke in the fall to get my bachelor's in exercise science, like kinesi kinesiology or something like that. And nice. hopefully work my way up to getting, become a certified strength coach and start working. Uh, and that's like the end goal. And then a job from there, like uh, uh, I'm working like part of this program, I have to intern like, to get hours, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm working on Fort Bragg with a strength coach team. That is just awesome. Actually, the lead strength coach is a 175 guy. Oh, um, right on. And a bunch of, a bunch of the strength coaches are former military, but not like meathead form. Like they're, they like, they were in the military, but a few of them are like have been through, like, I had no idea the trials and tribulation strength coaches have to go through. Like they have to go through uh, like unpaid internship for years. 
Oh, it's crazy. Really? Yeah. So they, they really opened my eyes um, in a few things and which way I potentially want to go. But ultimately, you know, I'll get my bachelor's in uh, about a year or so, and then uh, we'll take it from there. But ultimately, you know, it's, it, everything is just the supplement what you know my wife is doing honestly sure sure yeah yeah it's good man see if you'd have just uh conform to the air force you'd have your associates already yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> no i was yeah. just talking, I, I, a couple years ago uh, i talked to a guy about this and he was like you know what if i want to go to school i will but i don't want to be told you yes. gotta go to school you know that because that yeah. and then it kind of takes the i don't want to say fun but it, it like kind of takes the wind out of your sails you're like i i, I gotta do this yeah. i want to i would like you know most people want to go to school because they have a, a goal in mind not yeah. just because it fills a square you know what i mean so and that's all it felt like yeah just a checking a check blocker because there's two kids um at the 14th that came in with bachelors like but they didn't have their ccf so it's like <laughs> Look so crazy. I know. <laughs> is anybody like looking big picture? Like what does yeah, this yeah. actually make sense? Yeah, like so. that should fill that square. You know, yeah, that should be like, yeah. I, that's it. You know. Yeah. So that kind of stuff just the frustrating to no end. But uh yeah. yeah. Well, cool, man. Um again, I can't it, it was so good to see you. I, I, no, it's I, crazy. I you were bringing up so you're saying so many things as like bringing up some memories from like the back in the day. Yeah. And uh, and I can't thank you enough for for taking your time to to come on here. It was really cool. Oh, to, thank uh, you. This has been it, awesome. That's yeah. great. I truly appreciate it. And uh, like I said, I, I'm totally humbled. And uh, yeah, that you even uh, thought I'd be worthy well, enough to be on here. And be you're honest. like, of course, you're really, because number one, you're like, like I said, like I was saying on previous shows, like I have, I start with my sphere of influence guys that I know because it's, you know, um, and I would like, I, I definitely, I've been reaching out to guys that I didn't necessarily serve with, but yeah, you were just a no brainer, man, because just because not only did we serve together, but like you were in that unique situation where you transitioned and you had that army experience, you know, and that's so yeah. yeah. And you're just an all around good guy, man. I think, I, I, yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, and thank you. No, it was good talking to you, man. Yeah, it was you really good catching up. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, brother. All right, brother. All right. I'll see you later. Yep. Wait. Bye.